such a trauma, just dramatic day. A, that I don't even I don't even think the only thing I was in on day one was our neighborhood group because that's where um, Katie had first commented about him being gone. Um, so no, actually I wasn't in any Facebook groups day one. It was so it was such a crazy moment. So probably you, yeah. When you say uh, Katie commented, what do you mean by that? She joined a neighborhood group. Well, so I'm an admin of our private neighborhood group, um, and she uh, created a post. I want to say around i would say 7 30 maybe ish 7 30 that morning monday morning um simply just saying um my son is missing and kind of commented on a little bit about him like i think she made the comment about how tall he was um and that he was autistic and he was missing please check your cameras it was just like a two-liner just real quick sh shooting it out there So like maybe like an hour and a half hour something after she and, and Chris uh, that we found out that they called and reported Sebastian missing. Correct. That it was yes because I think that from what I understood, she called around. On six thirty that morning, I think was 6 it about six thirty. I think is yeah. Okay. So it's, it's, yeah, it was. And I think from what another neighbor said that she actually caught her SUV leaving the neighborhood. Um. Mm -hmm right before that or right after that um and so it was she did all that and then came back and then i guess that's when she put it on the, on the facebook page but i also remember what i thought was very odd was shortly before that another neighbor so if their house is here if you're going up stafford a little bit farther up stafford um was actually the first one to ask hey what's all the what's all going on in the neighborhood because my son older son left to go to work that morning approximately eight o'clock and there was already police all up and down Stafford, like just covering it. Um, and they were already out walking around and stuff. And so I don't know if she's, I guess she saw some of that traffic as she was leaving to go to work and she posted first on the Facebook page. And then Katie, after that is when she posted and I went back to find that and that previous neighbor deleted her post. What about Katie's I post? I don't know. No, her, the original post, the first post. Yeah. The, no the neighbor. There. Is, is she yeah it's gone she, I, I, she had to have deleted it because you can't if you're not the creator of the post you can't delete someone else's post they have to delete it but when i went back a couple of weeks after everything happened and things kind of calmed down a little bit um i was talking to somebody else and i was like you know i remember um didn't such and such uh make the post first and this is a neighbor down the street for me and she said yeah i i remember that and i was like i wonder what the time frame was different and i went back to look and it was gone so the original neighbor that very first posted asking what was all the commotion going on and I still wonder if that's why Katie posted that. But then Chris, it was like two or three neighbors after. So she, Katie posted her comment or her post. And then several people commented after. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. She was asking, like, everybody check their cameras. I didn't see. And then the bus coming through and all of that. She said it was approximately about 6 o'clock, 6.15, 6.20. It was right in between supposedly when she discovered him missing supposedly she gets up she runs around the house she gets dressed and she drives it out of the neighborhood and that kind of thing and goes looking for him
Um, but I know the neighbor, next, if you're looking at the prophet's house on the left, when she went running out of her house hysterical, um, the neighbor next to her was already out. You know, of course, everybody's getting up, getting ready for work, getting kids ready for school. Bus comes uh, six, seven, no, yeah, 645, 6.50-ish. 645, 650. It's been a long time since my kids have ridden the bus, so I have to really think about that one. Um, but it's definitely before 7 because the kids have to be in school in class by 7.30. Um, and, and we're the last pick up before he actually goes to school because we're right next to the school. Um, so, you know, everybody was getting up and getting ready for work and everything. So they actually, she actually saw her out and she asked her what was going on. She told her. And so she actually walked around the house and was helping her look around the house. So she was already back from looking around 7. Interesting. When she left to go look for Sebastian, I know that if you turn right going out of the prop, which you go up the top of the hill, it's a cul-de-sac, or you go around and you can go up your street all the way at the back where the, the construction is. Did she, before she ventured out of the neighborhood, did she go up those roads, do you, do you know of, to look? Did she go up my road? Your road or, or her road itself to the top of the cul-de-sac, uh, you know, where, the, where the her only road thing I was Right. So the only thing I was told, of course, we, we nobody in my house was up or out yet. So I can't verify that because we weren't out yet. But the neighbor that told me that she saw her, her SUV drive across her driveway saw her leave. Like so leave that's right. That's yeah. interesting. So you would think that she, maybe you stay in the neighborhood a little bit and go up and down your own streets. Look well, that was when she that now. was when she went that was when she went to the school thinking that he had walked to the school. Can I apologize? My mic was on silent. I am so, so sorry. Right? This is so... Oh, I hate this mic. Keep forgetting. Right? I turned it off when I was... Because I was parking about in here, in my room, doing something so that when you hear, when you hear it in the background. While the intro was playing, and I forgot to turn it back on. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Right, we are listening to the interview that Bobby the neighbor who lives up the top of Kelly Lane. Right? It's a main, if that's the main road you turn on to and off that road is all these like there's another road and then there's Stafford Court. You know what I mean? So Kelly Lane is the road you turn on to when you go into that community. So she's admin to Facebook. And I skipped past that bit, to be honest, because uh, she's just talking about who put what up and whatever. That don't mean anything to me. So. so anyway, so she's now just telling you about the times that like the school bus will come about quarter to seven, seven o'clock. <coughs> because it wouldn't take half an hour or oh, well, 20 minutes it'll take what once the kids get on the bus at 7 o'clock say 5 past 7 by the time they've got on the bus or they've sat down and whatever then it's only going to take another 5 minutes up the road to the school So it might even be lighter than that. The bus comes round. And right. Let's listen. School on his own, which I don't know why he's never done that before. So why would he, why would he do that? I mean, like, why would he just walk to school by himself? Plus he had no shoes on, supposedly. So like, why would he walk to school by himself? So, but that's what I was told that he, she actually walked around her house outside, couldn't, didn't find him. So she got in her car and drove to the school. And was back by seven. Around that time. So At least Seb actually before that. Yeah. The Sebastian, did he take the bus to school or did he did did Katie take him in, in her from, car? From what like, the from neighbor yeah, from what the neighbors of course I don't have kids that ride the bus anymore. Um, but from what the neighbor nearby said that he does he did ride the bus now the neighbor on the corner that has a surveillance camera said that there is a special bus that comes for certain kids that have special needs and whatever and she said she said i don't think he gets on that bus i think he gets on the other bus um so that was what i was told i can't verify that so i can't answer that appropriately got you got you so we're talking all law enforcement all there starting to descend onto the area 8 a.m ish right 8 a.m ish what well, they, they were there before that that that's that they were already there and cars parked by the time when my son went to work at eight, 
they were already there and already got clumped up together and starting to talk because they were already in the front yard talking to them. So they were, I don't know exact. I mean, I would say probably it was even before. I mean, they were probably there. I'm trying to remember what she said when she got ready to leave. She never said anything. The neighbor that called me and told me about it never mentioned law enforcement being there. She just said that Katie was outside walking around, you know, upset and everything. And she asked her, like, what's going on? Um, but she didn't specify if there were law enforcement there, but they were already there and out of their cars and in the front yard at eight o'clock. So they had to have been there before that. Gotcha. Any idea when Seth got there? No, but I do know that he was there by the time my kids went over there, like I said, which was about eight 30, he was already there. And I also know that his truck was, yeah, his truck was there like off and on the whole time. Gotcha. But I don't know what time exactly. Yeah, Seth did say he got there about eight eight fifteen because he's trying to get there from where he's working, right? Back to that house, back to the house, without getting a speeding ticket or breaking the law. You know what I mean? But going as fast as he possibly could. Because don't forget, all he got was a message off Chris saying, uh, phone 911, or call 911, something like that. So he calls him, and then uh, Chris goes, don't get mad, but Sebastian is missing. Don't get mad. That wouldn't have been my first reply question. I would have gone, have you seen or heard of Sebastian? And then Seth would have gone, no, why? Then you've gone, well, he's gone missing. We don't know where he's gone. We thought maybe he'd got in touch with you or something like that. But he does think, he says, don't get mad, Sebastian's missing. Okay. So what happens, to, just explain everybody to everybody then, what did law enforcement do at that point, like throughout the morning, once they all arrived there? Did more and more law enforcement come or was oh, there certain... I, I, I was like, I told my neighbor down on the street, I said, I didn't even know we had these agents agencies. I mean, like every, I've never in my life ever seen such a response. It was, it, it, it was all, it was overwhelming. It was like, it kind of freaked me out. Like, oh my God, I feel like I'm living in a real life like drama crime scene. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. The very first um, that came out was the sheriff's department because we live in the county. So sheriff's department respond first because, you know, we're part of, we're not part of the city. So they came out first and they literally walked all up and down and around and everything. Um, and then they came door to door um, and asked everybody, you know, who all had cameras and whatnot. What did you see? What do you know? Whatever. Um, and then it was now, of course, I'm having to really go back in my head. It's been a little while. Um, it was it was later on that that afternoon. They brought some dogs in and they um, started walking around. They came around the houses and asked everybody to walk around their own property, look underneath stuff in anything that's unlocked. So all of us up and down my street, everybody, my neighbors came out with me. She and I walked together, walked all up and down our yards, all across the street, up and through the cul-de-sac, um, down the street a little bit. Um, there's a. A uh, wire, a barbed wire fence behind us as of right now, where the new construction is, so you can't get over that. But we could walk around it, and so we both walked up and around that. Um, just looked everywhere that was kind of close by, um, and then I noticed that they had the drones up. And of course, the news was short. That, that was Tuesday. The news came out and was flying the helicopter around. Um, it was chaotic. It was absolutely chaotic. Um, did, did you see um, Seth and uh, Katie out there looking? No, not in our neighborhood. Mm -mm, never. Never seen them walk, walk around. No, they were in their yard out, but never left their property. No. Um, and I know for a fact because um, so Monday, my kids were out with law enforcement because at that point it was we need to have all the neighbors come out, help us look everywhere, whatever. So they were open to everybody coming in and help. So at that point, my actually my kids jumped into one of those razor things um and drove all up and through the property and stuff. And then my other one walked with the canine unit in the um construction zone he walked all the way through that they literally i had to call him one point in time and tell him y'all need to come home and have lunch i mean this is crazy i know you want to help but you gotta come now that part where she said uh, one son was walking with the dog handler 
Right, hold on. Where, where the son was walking with the dog handler. He shouldn't have been anywhere near that dog handler. Walk several feet behind. Right? Like 15 feet behind. But he shouldn't have been anywhere near that dog handler. So that's a big mistake they made there by letting that lag walk with them. on meat and so then they came home they ate and then they went back out there and they were out there with them all day monday all day tuesday and then so tuesday we had swat that was the day we had the vigil and <laughs> um little it was interesting because we put out a post on the neighborhood group that we're having a vigil and everybody's invited but we want it to be just the neighborhood only because we want it to be a private vigil just for our neighborhood and for the family we were hoping if we made it more um personal like that that the, that the family would come and they would be overwhelmed with all this that was the other thing good god the traffic the second that it got out we had tons of people just driving up and down the street just looking and watching i'm like i, I don't know what you're going to do to help we were flooded already with caught you know police i don't know what outsiders coming in are going to do i mean it, it was it was chaotic as it was anyway and now you got all these extra people coming out there so it just got so chaotic um but so tuesday night we planned the vigil um, went down there, got in a big circle, uh, introducing everybody and, um, the there's neighbors. I don't want to get too personal here. There, there's, a, there are neighbors. Actually, we have, I think two, maybe three sets of neighbors that are in law enforcement. They're in different counties. Um, one of them is actually a part of Hendersonville police. And then the other two are from other counties. Um, they came to the vigil. And matter of fact, the one that is part of Hendersonville has been in a neighborhood since almost the beginning. Um, know them very well, good, good people. Um, and he was down there with a flashlight because we had so many people driving up and down and around and circling and circling and going up and down and circling and coming back and forth. And we're just like, good grief. The Crowdfoot sent, I don't know who it was, but they came down and we were all introducing ourselves and they introduced themselves as aunt and uncle. The Crowdfoot? Aunt and uncle? Prophet Apparently, I don't know if it was Chris's, somebody's brother, or that's what they introduced themselves as. We are, maybe it was Sebastian's aunt and uncle. Chris and, Katie, it was. Chris and Katie said they were their aunt and uncle? Well, it, it wasn't, Chris and Katie didn't come. They sent family members, and when they introduced themselves, they introduced themselves as we're aunts and uncles. Why so didn't I guess Chris, Sebastian's aunt and uncle? Why didn't Chris, did Seth go? No. So no Seth, no Seth, no profits. They basically sent their own representatives. Family members that clean yes. the rain. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. I got two questions back on the first day. When did when do you know that Chris arrived home? I did not because I didn't even I, I didn't know. I had never met them. They they moved in and nobody knew them. Like I still don't know anybody that really knows them. Like nobody ever really knew them. Um when and so I I'm honest with you. In today's society like, I remember when I grew up, my mum, we knew all the neighbours in the road, everyone, and they all knew us, right? And when I got married and we got our own place and we had the kids, it was like the only people I really knew were the parents of the children that my two children played with, right? But it wasn't as if I knew what they did every day, where they went, you know what I mean? If I saw them, I'd say hello. There's one across the road I used to get on with really well, and um, I used to get on with the neighbour next door to me until her partner, the father of one of her children come out of prison. And the other woman who lived the other side of me, I got on with her okay. Hi. But I didn't really see much of her near the end. She was hardly ever there, so I never really seen, saw much of her. So it wasn't as if we stood there and had coffee on the doorsteps or over the across the fence and things like that. It was nothing like that. Not like when, when I grew up and my mum would stand there yattering away to the next door neighbours and 
whatever, you know. So, I'm, I'm not like that now where I live, right? I know people to say hello to, but I don't know what they do. When did they move in? Do you know? I think, well, Pretty so apparently it was a year and a half ago. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, and they, they just say to themselves and nobody really even knew them. I didn't even know that the original owners sold their house and not because we don't, you know, our neighborhood is a, just a real quiet neighborhood. Everybody kind of stays to themselves except for, you know, if you need something or if a dog, you know, a pet gets out or if somebody goes on vacation, you know, hey, will you watch my house? That kind of thing. But we're, we don't really, unfortunately, I think everybody just have busy lives and stuff, you know, and, and we just don't know. I mean, like each, each, each neighbor knows the neighbor next to them. Like I know all the neighbors around me. And I know a lot of their original neighbors that were there from day one, but I don't know the ones that have moved in over the past five years. And I think with Some, COVID, that kind of messed everything up too. Gotcha. Somebody put in the chat, what time does the trash get picked up in the morning? <laughs> that is the biggest misconception. Here we go with the whole light thing, right? Is this is where we're going. So, one, more thing, one more thing first. The, the very first day, the dogs. You saw dogs out there. You saw, oh, yes, did you absolutely. See dogs going a specific direction or area? Did you see them centered around a certain area or were they? did they pick up any scent? Okay, so there was no scent that was picked up from their house to anywhere. However, and my, my kids were with the handler and the canine and actually watched. He followed them all through the construction zone. And one of my kids actually saw one of the dogs take the handler to one of the um, retention ponds. And not only did he go to the retention pond, he ran to it and jumped in it. And the handler had to go and get him and take him out of the water and then dry him off. And my son looked over the handler and said, oh, my gosh, I've never seen anything like that before. He looked at me and said, he's never done that before. And my son said, why did he just jump in that? He said he was following a scent. And so then the other. On that? Did they go in the water? Did they take scuba divers or anything in there? Supposedly, when I told Seth that, when I met him at the most recent vigil, he said they drained the pond twice and nothing. But not only did I see that, but when on day three, I think it was Wednesday, when they, when National Guard came through and they had their dogs. Oh, yeah. Oh, National yeah. Man. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were all up and down through the neighborhood. That's why when everybody said. Hi, little funky chick. I'm sorry, I didn't see the chat. Uh, there's four watching on X. There was others on YouTube. There's Right, but uh, they disappear. They come and go. So, ha from Hawaii. Is it, it's okay. Is there ever channel? What do you mean? I don't know. What I'll do, I'll stream onto X as well. Sorry. When I'm going live, I stream on to X. Hello, hello. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, there was ever the. Uh, I I knew there's more than one on YouTube. I knew that, but they've disappeared. They'll be back. They come and go. Bye. Well, Twitter X is Twitter. It's just changed the name. But we're, as I said, we're looking at, we're going over the interview JLR did with the neighbour. We're not going to watch it all because I'm just going to skip past this bit actually. And um, because, as I said, you've got to take it if a pinch of salt, like that thing about where she said your son was walking with the dog hang handler. Well, if that is true, then that's wrong. Because dog handlers will say if you don't follow, but be a distance behind us. You know what I mean? Don't be by the side of us. You can distract the dog. You know what I mean? 
So I took that with a pinch of salt there. But as I said, there are things she says which I'm thinking, ooh, that's interesting. And the reason I'm playing this now is because it comes to the situation with the likes, okay? And then uh, I'll be showing you some on the likes. The new truck, they have an arm and it does it for them. So that was another thing. Whether they're having to pick up these, big, no, they're not. They have an arm. They roll it over to the arm, connect it to the arm, and they dump it. You can hear it. I mean, it's not quiet. It's it's loud. I mean, you can hear yeah. the, the arm doing all that. So by the time they but they they collect the trash coming up the street though, yeah. not going down it. They're collecting it as they come up. So I guess they're probably in the neighborhood just like around five, just before God. five. Hey, and they're out of there before the buses come. Yes. Or the bus come, or the you know Absolutely. you said buses. Uh, where's trash go? Oh, it gets dumped in um, either Nashville or Gallatin. If Nashville is full, they'll temporary, temporarily dump it to um, Gallatin. And then once, I guess, Nashville gets in it, whatever, then they'll transport to Nashville. The big misconception was that the neighborhood behind us, they get picked up by a different company on Tuesdays. Um, so that's, that's a whole different thing. Is that that construction development you're talking that, about? Well, that's, that was the dumpster that everybody was asking about. How is it possible that... You know, whatever that the, the dog hit over there as well. That the second dog that was out walking hit also by the trash dumpster, and the trash dumpster owner found that out when when law enforcement told him that we got a hit by the dumpster. The owner of the dumpster called them back and said, "Okay, we dumped our trash on this certain day, Tuesday, whatever, on that certain day in Kentucky. So go, you guys need to go and get a, get a warrant, obviously." And he gave them permission to go search the Kentucky dumpster or landfill. So that's why they went to Kentucky. And then I was told that they also check Gallatin and Nashville as well. Uh, that not well, I don't know if they did. I, I understand they did check Gallatin because Gallatin, uh, where they take the rubbish, right, is like um, a stopover sort of thing. When their trucks get too full, they'll go and unload it all there. Right, and then carry on with their route, and then another truck comes and takes it all down to the one in Nashville. Right, so I don't know if they Katie claims the night Nashville is 20 because I think if they've been to Nashville, right, I'm sure law enforcement, not law enforcement, the news. People would have been there. Oh, look like doing a, a search at Nashville. So I don't think they have. They might be saying they have, but I'm sure if they had, not even Nick Berry said anything about it. So I don't think they did go to check at Nashville. I think that, that Sebastian takes the trash out after they arrived home from going out to dinner. Yes. Go ahead. There is, there's no, there's no specific footage of that. The neighbor that has the ring door camera that saw that, she said to me on the phone that the only thing you can see is a silhouette. She said you cannot see a physical person. There is absolutely no physical proof of Sebastian being at their house that night after dinner. There's nothing. There's her car coming home. My neighbor did tell me that she had saw her car come, but she parked in the garage, so nobody saw him get out of the car. What time was that? But surely if there's uh, like a silhouette of someone putting the trash cans on the curb, right? You, they'd be able to say whether it's Sebastian or the mother because of the size difference. Because Sebastian was very, very tall and very slim. His mother had a bit more bulk on her. I wouldn't say she was overweight, but she was a bit more bulkier than Sebastian. I always wanted to know what time she arrived home. You know. I, I asked, and she said that um, it was so dark that she couldn't really see. She saw the, about um, six or so, I think is what she said, ish, because they went to dinner at Texas and then supposedly came home, and then her car came into the driveway around six, and then somebody pulled the trash bin out, um, you know, after that. Uh, but she did, they don't know who it was because you can't tell. So, no can't evidence. See. Any neighbor, including yourself or any, because you all talk, the neighbors talk to everybody and say, there's nothing to indicate that he was home 
um, that night. He got home. Right. I'm trying to find a bit where she talks about the yeah. lights. Why? Look, <laughs> that's the question I asked. When I called, I got a kind of a, I think all of us are just super frustrated as this continues to go on that we don't understand what's happened. We don't know what's happened. You know, we've all been involved in trying to find him day one. We've spread it. We've shared it on social media. You know, a lot of us were out with law enforcement the first week or so, um, you know, looking for him and stuff. I mean, you know, this shook us up to the core. It flipped our neighborhood upside down and just shook. I just dropped that then. Sorry. I mean, nobody left their house for two weeks. Even the families who walked their dogs every single day, we didn't see them for two weeks. Why? So, what, why? Yeah, I mean, we didn't know what was going on. We had no idea what happened. I mean, when you have a 15 year old kid that just vanishes in thin air, nobody wants to leave. We're just, we're scared. And then, of course, you see Chris, you know, have, getting upset through all these YouTube videos. And if you know your neighbor is that, that upset and threatening people and saying the things he's saying, you're not going to go, go, be a part of that. Um, you never seen Sebastian Rogers in the neighborhood or walking around or anything at prior to that day. Nothing. From th what I understand from neighbors that live right, right close to him, the only time they ever saw him come out was when he was playing with the dogs, the dogs would get out and, you know, he'd be out there for a little while, but nobody ever really knew him. Nobody knew any of them. He never came out to play with the neighborhood kids. You never saw him out riding his bike. I mean, now I'll tell you this. I mean, we have neighbors that go out, like I said, and walk their dogs every single day, sometimes even twice a day. You have kids that will go out and play basketball. We have a basketball goal in one of the cul-de-sacs. Um, kids will come up and play basketball and basketball goal. They'll walk, you know, ride their bike. We have a um, uh, one kid that has a full wheeler and a dirt bike, and he rides around, that kind of thing. Didn't even know Sebastian existed. Never played with anybody. No friends, nothing. Never had any friends over their house. Yeah, how long was because I heard that Seth was there for a few days, right? So, there's neighbors, I think there was a serial kidnapper law, exactly. Well, it's looking now like have you seen any updates on the video with the lights? There's a, a, a YouTuber. And I'll put the link in the description, if you're not a member, the mob crew. Yes. If it was a... Right. First of all, law enforcement put him down as a runaway. Right? I was just runaway. Because that's the narrative Chris and Katie fed them. He just, he just walked out the door. Don't know why. Just walked out that door. That's the narrative they was feeding him. Oh, right. <laughs> so, anyway, so they was feeding this narrative. He just walked out the door. So, first day, the police marked him down as missing, a runaway. Right? On the Tuesday, they put him down as a mi uh, missing. Or was it on the Monday? One of the days, but then on the Tuesday, sorry, they put him from an endangered alert to an amber alert. Now, if you read up on an amber alert, they, it's for, if the law enforcement believe there's a possible, possible harm, kidnapping or possible harm, something like that. There's more to it, but it's to do with kidnapping and possible harm. Well, I mentioned once in one of my lives, I said, why are they so adamant? Like, they want us to focus on that front door. Why? To distract us from any other door. They don't want us to focus on the back door. They want us to focus on the front door. 
right? Because they're so adamant. It's like saying, you know, when you see these cases like Summer Moon, Summer Moon, uh, Utah Wells, right? Summer Wells. Her parents, adamant from the moment she first got home, she's been kidnapped. They was adamant that someone come upon that hill and took their little girl. Even though there's no proof that that had happened, nothing. Right? Even till this today, they will swear she was kidnapped. And I always used to think, why are they so adamant? It's because they don't want us to look anywhere else. They want us to focus on the fact she was kidnapped. And then that means she's been took away from the home, away from the area. So people start looking further out. Now with this, they want us to focus on the front door rather than the back door. Right? And that just piqued my I'm thinking, no, no, I don't think he went out that front door. I don't even think he went out there on his own. Not by himself, put it that way. And I was just going through this interview because I just want to show, listen to the part where she goes on about the car pulling up. I want to find out, just double check where she says the car first pulled up. Right? Because the way um, the mob crew's doing it, and I really believe he's on the ball here. He's on the ball here with some, right? Even though some, some YouTubers don't think he is. Might be a bit of jealousy, I don't know. Hold on, I'll write that down. Right. Write oh, this down. Um, Mishka Johnson. From Hawaii. Even now, they know the hubs did something still pleading for info on the moon. I'll look into that. Thank you, funky little chick. I'll probably be tomorrow because normally by the time I get off here, it's like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock and it's timing because I'm in the UK. So <laughs> I'm absolutely wiped out by the time I come off my live. But I actually think now, with the Sebastian, I think he was carried. Oh, I'm from the UK, Scotland. I haven't got the Scottish accent. I wasn't born here. I've got an English accent. So, I think he was being carried. Or if he was walking. Because there's something I want to show. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going, I'm going to replay this a bit more. And then we'll have a look. Do you? Where about? Well, you know what? If everything carries on the way it is in, in the UK, you might be getting some more. <laughs> because it's just ridiculous what's happening in the UK at the moment. I want to do a video about something and I don't know if I can. Because if I, and my son said, you can, as long as you don't make out like your enticing people to go out and cause, do riots and whatever. I said, sorry, to my son, I said, I can't even mention a certain group, a com certain community. I can't mention them. 
I said, I'll take up the police and knock on my, knock on my door at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, that's only across the river from me. I'm in Dundee. Fife is just across the river, the uh, River Tay. Really? Ella Fife. Hmm. I keep saying I want to check, uh, what is it, um, track my mum's heritage down, because she's Scottish, my mum was Scottish, but she didn't want no one checking down on her, tracking down her family and whatever. I could have more family members, you know what I mean? I could have, I don't, I don't think I'd have any more cousins. Unless it's come from the mum side, her mum side of the family. You know what I mean? But there could be more members of my family over there. And they came from, my brother tracked them down to either, where was he? I can't think now. Oh, I can't think. Somewhere over the other side, both both. <laughs> You're welcome. Here's my email. I'm not on Facebook at the moment because I'm having an argument with them. Because they've stopped my pages, they've blocked all my pages, saying I posted something offensive that went against their regulations. For having him been on Facebook. So... But there's my email. You can email me anytime. I will get back to you. I do check my emails. Anyway, so we're going to carry on. Day staying with the Proudfoots. Did you hear that? Is I that did. Truck? Well, I saw his. Yeah. I, well, I didn't know he was staying in their house, but I saw his truck there every single day for. He wasn't staying at their house. He used to go home on the night times. He was just staying there during the day. I was, see, when I heard that he had stayed in their house for three days, I was shocked. I didn't realize he had actually stayed in the house because, and then they said three days. I'm like, well, that's odd because his truck was parked on the curb of the street for about a week. But I didn't know he was actually there because he was out searching. Like he was actually at the command center for the first week every day, all day long. Was. Seth was. Not Chris and Kate. Chris and Kate? Oh, no. 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 They never left their house. Never. Not never. I'm aware of. But any flyers, go to door to door, you know, to speak with neighbors. Oh, I've just remembered where it was. My brother tracked my fam my some somewhere to do with my mom down to either Lower Largo or Upper Largo. And that's over the other side of the river. Somewhere over there. Yeah, you can do that. Just ask them if they've seen anything, nothing. No. Wow. Nope. That, that nope. is so good, Miss Bobby. So do you... And the only, go ahead. I was just going to say, the only thing they even put on Facebook was that one post. Which eventually got deleted. Theirs didn't. The original neighbor that was asking, hey, what's all the commotion on Stafford? She, that person, deleted their post. Gotcha. Katie's is still up there. Were the Bower socks around at all during that week? Yeah, I know you said that they were there that morning. Did they look around? Did they look around? No, I, no, we never saw anybody. None of them ever looked. In our neighborhood where I'm at, I never seen any of them walking around at all, period, ever. So. Chris, Katie, Bowersox, none of them ever. I never even met them. I had one encounter with, with Chris one night. Um, and after, I mean, I no, never saw him, never met him, nothing. The Chris encounter, you, you mind sharing? I, I think we talked about this offline a little bit. Yes. I'll, okay. So I'll kind of share a little bit of that. Um, my, this was the, gosh, what day, what day was it? Thursday, I think it was. I think it was Thursday. 
that Thursday night. Um, now, mind you, our neighborhood is on pins and needles. Um, don't know what happened to this kid. Don't understand law enforcement's, you know, coming up and around. We've got every department that I didn't even know existed. Like I said, I didn't know, you know, we had a SWAT team. I didn't know we had, you know, drone footage. I didn't know we had any of this stuff. I mean, we're, a, you know, a small county. I didn't have. Well, I'm going to skip this bit because. Let's drive down there okay. and, and, and turn your lights on and see if you can see somebody out there walking. I said, I'll no, we'll go past there. And then he said, there's a, there's a. Uh, police, what do you, um, the, the heat sensor mobile unit things, you know what I'm talking about, that, that can, I'm friends with, I asked her, like, you know, did you ever see, she said, I never really paid attention, because, like, he would come and go, and they never were out, really, you know, and they, they had this, this camper, and the camper would leave, and then it would come back, and then, you know, he never came outside, and, and it's odd, because Seth kept, I mean, Chris kept saying that he would go outside and play, and, you know, all that kind of stuff, and she's like, I don't remember ever seeing him really outside playing, like, there's no playground, they don't have a playground outside, they don't have a trampoline outside, like, if you looked at their yard, you wouldn't even know there's no bike, there's no, like, scooters, there's no basketballs, I must admit, if I had a garden like that, I know it was fenced up their garden. Right, because the other areas in between the two houses were like communal areas. Right. But if I had a garden, I'd have a trampoline for my, my, my kids. Wow. Well, when my kids were little, trampolines weren't a big thing, to be honest with you, they weren't. But then again, my kids like the bikes and everything else, bikes and scooters. There is, n you wouldn't even know they have kids. There's <laughs> nothing in their yard to play with. He never got, like he didn't go outside and play catch with his dad, nothing. Interesting. Now, as you said, pitch black in the neighborhood. Do you buy it where they're claiming that this kid walked out the front door and kind of did that? Hood. No, you, no, because you, every, no, because everybody around the camera. Would a kid that? go out at night and walk around out there at night alone? I don't think so. I mean, and, unless their parents didn't. Now we did have a ding dong ditch happen a couple of years ago, um, but no. I mean, I've never, I've never experienced kids just randomly walking around the neighborhood. That's the thing about our neighborhood is it's so quiet. Like at night, literally, like you know, in the summertime when my kids were younger. <laughs> sorry, my car shut off for me for something um when my kids were younger they would go outside and play like flashlight tag and stuff like that and i had to get on to them like okay 10 o'clock y'all need to be done because everybody's got to go to bed and whatever nobody ever gets like you don't ever just see random kids walking around by themselves i don't buy that at all and i know that that neighbors that are right around them said that there was nothing on their cameras nothing so no evidence whatsoever for that morning no. 26 and uh, not even the 25th the night of the 25th do you think law enforcement? He just vanished. He literally just vanished. What's your theory? What do you think? What do you think happened? What's your theory? Based off you being a neighbor, based off you speaking to other neighbors, you're very close to the area. You've seen law enforcement over there. What do you think happened? I have to be very careful with that one. Um, I know there were some family dis, dis issues. Like there were some personal stuff going on within the family between Katie and Chris. Um, I, I, I would, Seth told us, you know, that he was supposed to get full custody. One minute he says that Katie was okay with it. The next minute I'm hearing that Katie was not okay with it. Um, I, I don't know their personal story. I know that neighbors um, are close by them heard fighting within their family outside verbal things that were said um, outside. So I don't know that it was, you know, I, I think they, they were, that there were some struggles within the, the family. I mean, everybody's got their, every family has issues. I get that, but I don't know. Families typically would, get into that kind of a dispute outside. I mean, if, if I was going to have a conflict of interest between my kids and I, or my husband and I, we would be inside. I would be outside making that known. And apparently there were some situations where things were heard that weren't good. Bobby, when did, when did, when did those fights occur? Do you know? Uh, when we, over the past, I mean, you know, I guess since they've, they've been there like, periodically, it, it wasn't like a one-time thing. It was, there were other, you know, times where, things were said and, and that kind of thing. I, I don't live close enough to them to have heard that. I mean, they would have to have screamed at each other for me to have heard that. I, I didn't hear it, but I know that neighbors around them um, have reported hearing things that were said outside and it wasn't any, like a one-time thing. Any cops ever get called? Or well, I mean, CPS was, was, you know, 
calls multiple times. And I, I know teachers personally uh, that still work at Beach um, that were told things and they had to report it. I mean, when a teacher is told, counselors and teachers are told things, they by law have to report it. Mandatory and I know report. that, absolutely. Um, and I know that, you know, kids can be um, over-exaggerating. I, I, I know that, especially teenagers, that kind of thing. Um, I think for me, you know, it, it, I think my kids would be um, respectful enough with us that if something happened, I don't think they would go and say like, you know, my mom is mean to me. Like they know I would, that's not true. And they would get in trouble for lying. So for him, for him to make up that things that he was saying, I just, I can't, I can't imagine him making certain things that were set up um, enough, enough. But I'll tell you now, Chris moved out of that home into the five wheeler at the beginning of February. Sometime in January was when CPS come out again, child services, right? And I think an investigation wasn't put in place. And while there's an investigation in place, they, they can ask the person who is under investigation, such as Chris, to move out of the home while the child is still there. Because when he was saying he hadn't been home, hug me, all month, I thought, what? You weren't even coming home on the odd week. I know sometimes you can work weekends, but surely you come home one weekend and whatever, a fortnight, or something like that, every fortnight, make sure you come home. You know what I mean? Sleep in your own bed, and eat proper cooked meals, and things like that. Who wouldn't do that for a couple of nights, and then go back Sunday evening, drive back down Sunday evening? Or even drive back down Monday morning, early hours Monday morning? So... Then when I heard about child services being called out, I went, that's why. That's why he wasn't at the home, because he was asked. Even though he vehemently would say he was not under investigation. I, just my opinion, I, I think he was. And that's why he wasn't at the fam family home. Come on. For CPS to be called on them. And I know they were called multiple times. Multiple times. So how when you say multiple, how many times? I have no idea. I have no has idea. Any, I, I've, has any I'm not neighbor, privy to that information. Has any neighbors or anybody tell you that they've seen the CPS at their house? Like I, I don't know. They have not actually used the words I've seen them at my the house, but they've told me that there have been a people that have visited an official. Like, I don't know, like the car that comes is not going to have CPS written on it. Yeah. I mean, it may have a government official. Like, right, let's just skip this because we know about the CPS and there's not much they can tell. She didn't have it. a mattress. And that's the first one. <laughs> you spoke earlier about a silhouette and a light. inside. Oh, yeah. the Talk a little bit about that. Some people were asking that in the chat. What's that all about? Okay, so um, if I go back to day one and kind of rehash a little bit, try to make this as, as short as possible. Um, the, the neighbor close by that saw Katie out front on the way to taking her kids to school, she was the one that called me. Friends, I'm you know good friends with her. She's the one that actually called me and told me what was going on um, and yeah. said that, uh, I said, well, what happened? And she said, well, I went and asked Katie what happened. And she said, and this is where the story gets totally misconstrued. I don't know. Um, again, third party, I'm hearing this from another third party source. So, you know, I've got to trust this lady. She's a good friend of mine. I don't, there's no reason why she would lie. Um, but she said, when Katie, um, ha they had got home from Texas Roadhouse, took the trash out, so on and so forth. Um, he, Sebastian was in his room. She was in the kitchen, I guess, getting, you know, whatever done. Um, and, and from her house, she's close enough to where she can see from the ring camera, like the lights inside. Because it's dark. So, I mean, if, it, if you have lights on, you can see it. Um, and so she said that she could see the lights in the house around 10 or so. Um, then Katie told her that Sebastian was in her room. She was in the kitchen. She said, you need to go to bed. And he said, okay. And she goes in the living room and does whatever, watch the TV. She says she was studying. I don't know, whatever, doesn't matter. She's in the living room for whatever reason. 
and approached. Oh, uh, she's superwoman. She was studying, right? Talking to Chris on the phone and falling asleep at the same time. Yep. Now, I can read a book and fall asleep, but I can't read the book while I'm sleeping. I can talk to someone on the phone and fall asleep, but I can't talk. Well, I fall asleep, I stop talking to them, wouldn't I? She told my neighbor that she fell asleep and. <laughs> Say that again. You broke up. Say it again. You broke uh, up. She. This book. And she yelled across the house and said, Sebastian, and he said, yes, mom. And he, she said, are you OK? He said, yes, I'm fine. I'm good. Go to bed. And she said, OK. So she gets up and my neighbor said, you can actually see his light go off, her walking across the house, her light go off and then a silhouette come up to the window for a minute. And then everything just goes black. What time was that again? Because you cut out. I'm sorry. I know my son was calling me. Um, OK, so she she woke up around 1130 is what she told my neighbor that she woke up about 11 about 11 30 and apparently he was still up but i i find it odd because my thought is and again none of my business i just think okay put yourself in that position if i have a child who's got special needs and i hear a thump i'm gonna walk into my child no let, let me let me put it this way my kids are all very healthy and normal i'm very blessed to have very oh god i'm gonna go past this but i think i've missed it i'm up with my gun in my hand to figure out who's coming in my house yeah because that's the thing is like she falls asleep on the couch and her kid just walks at the door. But then when I asked my neighbor about that again, called her the next day, I'm like, okay, explain this to me. This is what you said. This is, I don't understand that. And she said, oh, well, she woke up and then heard the thump and that kind of thing. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it goes with all that. I think I might have missed it. I, see what I find interesting, Miss Bobby is, you know, I, I was up there, what, a week and a half later, and then uh, we were searching, and uh, we were searching in, on that federal property, and there was a dog hit, mm -hmm. and uh, long. Yeah, it was all over our Facebook page. So they knew. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, if they were in the, yeah, and we had planned it a week before, so it's not like it was last minute, throw it together. It was, a matter of fact. Oh, I'm trying to find, come on, talk about the lights that we were getting overwhelmed with traffic and whatnot um so i do appreciate that but um and we were but i i would just think that you know maybe chris goes back to work and she stays there just in case but you know everybody handles things differently and if that's what she felt she needed to do then you know who am i to judge that but they haven't since this incident happened they really don't come out at all interact For whatever and she instead of her and i guess is you know again part of the investigation she said well you should always do that that's interesting yeah they have a responsibility come on talk about the lights to the neighbors about their surveillance because my thought is this you know when if you were to ask an officer a direct question if he can't discuss it instead of arguing with me the response should have been i can't I think I've missed it. No, I mean, I think I missed it because I know it isn't this far up. Anyway, I've got to move on because if she heard your thug and was on the phone with CP, then CP would have heard her say, what is that? Yes. But I was talking about this the other last week sometime in one of my lives. Chris was asked about that thug on another YouTube interview. And over the past couple of months, past month or so, I've been doing the transcripts of all the interviews, everything, well, everything where anyone's talked about Chris or talked about Seth or Katie. I've been typing them all up. Because when I type it up and I see it written, I'm thinking, oh, yeah. That makes more sense. So they asked him, right? It was the interview that was going on with where he, he joined the panel and it was on the web sleuth, web, web sleuths, right? It's the one where he went in like a bull in a china shop, having a go at the women on the panel. And he was asked about 
the thug. And um, he said, I have something like, it, but I put it this way, he wouldn't answer it, he wouldn't talk about it. And the PI said, well, Katie's already spoke about it. And when you said, and you came out and said, well, that's up to Katie. I'm not talking about it. And I, I, I find that really strange. Why? When Katie's talking about it, you was on the phone at the time it happened. All you've got to say is, yes, I heard you shout through to Sebastian and all this law. You know what I mean? But he won't talk about that thug. Just won't. And that, to me, is a bit mm, weird. If he's, in fact, on the phone with her, right, hold on, then where? Where is this question to KP since he's telling her, hey, go to bed? Why he never say, hey, what was that? Exactly! Or, what are you shouting? What, what's happening there with Sebastian? What's going on? You know what I mean? And then she could have said, oh, I've just heard him moving about in his bedroom. He should be asleep. But, no, I'm wondering if he was there. Because he don't... It's like she threw that thug in at the last minute. The first time she spoke about that evening, she just said, everything was fine, he went to bed, love you, Mum, love you, puppies, and goes to bed. Why? People wasn't believing that. For some reason, people wasn't believing that. And then she turns around and said... Well, he goes to bed at nine, love you, mum, love you, puppies, goes to bed. But then at ten o'clock, I heard a noise, right, and I shouted through, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you've got to go to sleep. Wow, then no one was believing that. So then she comes back out in another interview and she goes, yeah, I heard, I heard a thug. At ten o'clock, I heard a thug. So it goes from no, no sound... No noise, to a noise, and then from a noise to a thud. And then she makes out that she had this little conversation with him. Was that you, Bubba, falling out of bed? No, Mum, I'm going to bed now. Why? And it's like she had to get everyone to believe it was okay. And I don't think Chris knew about that until she put it in. She put that into the story, the narrative herself. Because as I say, if you're telling the truth, your story never changes. But her story has changed. Right, ran back, ride back, missing flashlight. Right. Something I've seen today. In that light... Right, you got the lights. I'm going to pull that video up. Right, I'll pull the video up. Because this one's just getting on my nerves. Right, where is it? Uh, buh, buh, buh. Usually. Right, I'm going to pull this one up. This is the latest one the mob crew has done. The link will be in the description. Right. Hang on. I'll fast forward. Oh, come on. Come on. Pretty deep. Let me get back there. So I think what we're seeing is them uh, disappearing because they're in the ditch now. And then we have subject one who is just kind of hanging out between the two homes, um, perhaps just kind of waiting. Uh, again, depending on which way you, you swing, whether inside or outside job, um, you know, waiting for Sebastian to get Sebastian over. I said that a few weeks back now. I said there's always a truth in a lie or truth behind a lie. There's always a tr the truth is behind a lie. Right? I know. Um, I'm just so intrigued by it all now. Um, but he comes on. For me, like, it's coming on at, like, 1am in the morning. 
I'm going, what? <laughs> so I never get a live. I have to watch it on catch up. And, um, but there's just something on here I noticed myself. Right? And we'll see, I think we might see in this bit in a minute. Um, but then it seems uh, subject one then does appear to move behind the home, so we cannot see him. And then here we have subject two. Now we see a spot. Right. Let me just go back just a little bit. Bye. Where you're at with that ditch, uh, it's pretty deep when it gets back there. So I think what we're seeing is them uh, disappearing because they're in the ditch now. And then we have subject one who's just kind of hanging out between the two homes. Um, perhaps just kind of waiting, uh, again, depending on which way you, you swing, whether inside or outside job, um, you know, waiting for Sebastian to get Sebastian over. Um, but then it seems, uh, subject one then does appear to move behind the home. So we cannot see him. And then here we have subject. If you move his little arrow away, right, it looks like two people. That actually looks like two people walking while well, moving quickly towards subject number two. So subject one actually looks like two people. But you can't really tell from this because it's got his little arrow in the way. Two. Now we see a spot where, oh, notice they kind of stall right here, um, which is kind of interesting, you know. See what I mean? Can you see it now? It looks like two people. One, two. It's really weird. They're there for, you know, a good... Definitely a looks like two people uh, there. Not sure what's going on there. And then finally, they, that of house. course, then disappear between the two homes. But, yeah, it makes me wonder, you know, was there kind of a struggle uh, or... Bye. And it was bugging me. I do think law enforcement knows more, but diverts so as not to taint. Yeah. So, but you see, the thing is, <laughs> YouTubers can either help a case or harm a case. Why? No, I think the video they showed Seth and the video they showed Chris was, yes, the garbage truck, which came along later in the morning. Yeah? Because don't forget, on that uh, home security camera, the clock is stuck at 3.11. Right? Yes, there is one light going back to the home. Right? Oh, I think we'll see it in a mini. You know, who knows? Uh, but here's just an overshot of this. And then we're going to get to the lights. I know Brady's here for the lights. Uh, like I said, I always just want to get everybody on the same page. So this is pretty much, this is credit to Crabtree. Uh, for <clears throat> then it looks like the car from what they believe the car actually then turns and i think they believe it even happens as these people were kind of coming back around which is kind of interesting uh not sure why it's possible they could have been trying to jam this camera i mean because if you're facing this way there has to be a reason why this car turned here because you know you're faced towards the exit right why not my opinion is they did do a uh, like what I would call a dry run, and I think they did it Friday night, Saturday morning. You know, the early hours of Friday morning, right? Because that is when her clock, her timer on her security camera stops. Stops on the twenty third of February, twenty twenty four, at three eleven. 
right? So like the 11, 3, 11 a.m. So I think they did a trial run on the Friday. Just to say, right, we're, we're going to drop you off here. I'll drive around here. Yeah? You wait there. Then you will see him come there. And then you bring Sebastian over. You know what I mean? Because I think this boy was waiting here. Around here. Right? And I think Katie was on doing a lookout and she saw the light. Because we don't if Katie was out in the back garden at that time. She could have been and she could have seen the light. Got Sebastian. Be saves the life. Said, Come on, we're going to play that game now. You're all in black. Black top. Black trousers, black uh, glass rims. You know what I mean? Everything was black. So was she playing a game with him? Because if you think whoever came across here first took their time getting through that ditch, yeah, because they had a second person with them. They had someone else with them. It wasn't just one person walking back from that house. It was two. Right, so they had to get down that ditch, then both of them get up out the ditch and make the way over. Because when you see that light again, that light is moving like the clappers. It's not messing about. It's ju it's it's that quick, I think he is right. I think they do jump that ditch. Because they're on their own, they're just gonna jump it, aren't they? up to the house. So who else was at that house? If that is the case, who else was there? Sebastian isn't going to leave with someone he doesn't know. Sebastian isn't going to go and leave with someone he doesn't know either. So whoever's got him, or whoever they met up with, or whoever took Sebastian, they must know him. Because he's not going to get in a stranger's car. His dad has said that. That he's, he would not get in a stranger's car. It could just be just holding it in, waiting, watching. Because if it was one of my, one of my kids, I would not say shit and just watch stuff. Yeah. I feel bad for Seth. And I... I can see where he's coming from. He's getting angry because no one is telling him anything. They're not talking to him. They're not saying anything to him. You know what I mean? They're treating him like a suspect when they know where he was. I think they lured him out by saying, come on, we're going to play. Be like a ninja. Like he's always said he wanted to be a ninja. Perhaps that's, that, that's what they was doing. You know what I mean? But I think he was alive, and I think they did get him out of the house that way. And I think, I, well, no, I'm not going to say nothing, but there was someone in that house that brought Sebastian across to meet up with this person here to get in that car. All right? We don't know who they are. I don't think it was a stranger one. Why? Because Sebastian wouldn't go with a stranger. The Lovely Bones. No, I've never seen that movie. What's it about? I like action films like guns and fights and things like that. Yeah, I know that. But what about this movie, Lovely Bones? What's that? Well, there seems to be a lot of activity going on around that one house, doesn't there? You know what I mean? Surely... Oh, okay. I'll watch it. Lovely Bones. Is it on Netflix?
Oh, Mark. Oh, he's great. Oh, yeah, I'm going to watch it then. I like him. Right? Well, it could be. You don't... Look how many children gone missing. Right? And then they've been found just down the road or just round the corner. You know what I mean? And yet the police have searched all the houses and searched all the cars and all the outhouses and everything. And they find them then in a house. So... I'll watch that. So, because it could be anywhere. And the fact that Chris is adamant that he's not within the five-mile radius makes me think he is. Anything is possible, little funky chick. You know what I mean? The f when someone is so adamant about a certain thing like how argument there was about the front door. Mike Smith think, no, he went out the back door. How argument that he wouldn't just run away. Well, no, he hasn't run away. He's walked away with someone. Why? Uh, so, and I, I just said Chris is so argument is not in the five mile radius. That just makes me think, you know what? I think he is. I think he is. I think he's in that within that five mile radius somewhere. And they need to check every flipping building. Don't rely on the neighbours to go out and check the barns and whatever. They need the police to go out and check every barn, outhouse, every barn, every cellar. Don't rely on the people who live there to do it. Get the police out there at every house and every property and check every nook and little cranny. Oh, so to hear that. Is he okay? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, that needs to be looked into. Oh, God. I'm so sorry, little, fun little funky chick. So sorry about that. But that is just little things that are bugging me about this case. But his story, mom's, mom's girlfriend, dad did it missing. Oh, right, okay. No, I get it checked out. Get, what's law enforcement saying? Anything? Hope they're better than some, some of the county. Yeah, but it's still a lot. You know what I mean? It's still a lot, little funk, chick. You know what I mean? That's something he's got to live with and he'll have that trauma all his life. You know what I mean? So... Yep, the summit definitely not right. Too many 
hmm moments. You know what I mean? Let's like, hmm. Really? So I just but I know right, hold on. Let me pull up Google Maps myself. I did this even right as well. Right. Uh, there we go. Share the tab. Right. Get rid of this. Right. Let's go in a little bit. Right, so apparently the car went up all the way up Kelling Line. All the way up. I should imagine it went all the way up to the top, turned round here, and come back down. Why would the car do that? And then stop there. Then one person maybe gets out and walks to there. No, alright, it's coming up that high, but I don't want to come on. Walks to there, right? Just say there. Then we see this person goes to there. And then we see a light coming from this area. And the reason it flashes on and off is because it's coming through the trees. Then it's down in that ditch. Then it's up again. Then it's across to here. Now I swear that light we see coming across there is like two people. Right? So when when you're on YouTube and something like this happens and some evidence is leaked. Like that footage of the lights, yeah? It, that was leaked. That she never got out. So the police have had to do a quick cover-up story by telling Chris and show, showing Seth and telling Chris it was the garbage truck. Right? So they've had to cover that up to get everything, everyone off it. And I must admit, I did back away from this because Seth said it was a garbage truck, so I believe Seth. And I believe what Seth saw was the garbage truck. But that was later on. I don't think they showed him the actual video of these two lights coming across here. Why? Or the video, the part of the video where the car was parked there. Or where there was a light round about here, another light source round about there. The car was parked about here. Right. Yeah, the car was parked about here. Right. And there's a light source about here, round about, I'll say about there. There or there. Right. It's very short, it's very quick. You blink, you can miss it. But there is another light source just there. But there is also another light source after she gets, after whoever that is going back to the house, right? They get back to the house. There's another light source comes up here. Just round about there. Right? By then, the car is parked here. So then, they walk round. Yeah? 
to see the car. The car, I think, was trying to put a jammer, jam the signal on this house. Didn't work. Didn't stop the video. Kept running. Because you have to be within a certain distance for these jam, uh, electronic signal jammers to work. So you can't be sitting over here and expect it to work. You, and they did say, pardon me, the car was parked in the middle of the road. Not on the edge, in the middle. So he's trying to get as close as he could to that house. But not too close where possibly he could get picked up by a camera. If you know what I mean. So I think it was trying to jam their video. But there was another light that went back to that house and they went pretty quick. They moved pretty... Compared to how slow they come across, going back, they went really quick. So who is he? And now people are putting this together and then all of a sudden... I know people are a bit are iffy about Dad, Seth, but I just think he's doing anything he can... And maybe he isn't making it. You don't, come on, he's not thinking straight. He's at his lowest moment in his life ever. His son is missing all he wants. He said from the beginning, my life revolves around my son. I go to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Right? I pick my son up on a Friday. When I pick my son up, my life begins. I have my son Friday, Saturday to Sunday. Take him home. Once I take him home, my my life stops again, and I just go about my business for the next couple of weeks. Go to work, come home. Then two weeks later, I pick him up again, and my life starts again. So his life was his son. Yeah, and I know that feeling. I say I said that about my kids. My my kids are my life. I don't know what I'd do without my kids. Right? So, you know, it's not going to be making brilliant choices. Who does? Yeah, and he's looking and other people aren't. And there is that saying, you don't look for something you haven't lost. So think of that. I know. I heard about this case the Wednesday after he went. No, I heard about this case on the Monday night, the day of when he went missing. So it's probably early hours in the morning over there that time. So it's just all kicking off by then. And then on Tuesday, I did some research on it. And then on the Wednesday, I did my first live on it. What's the other two monkeys? Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Where's? Oh, where's the other two monkeys? Hmm. But you do, you're not going to be making the best decisions. You're not. You just grab it. It's like, you imagine you're going under the, under the water, yeah? I got I had that feeling once where my son I was trying to go out of this paddle boat, out the water into a paddle boat. My son comes along to climb out the water and steps on my head. So I go under. I just about get up again when my husband comes over and he pushes my head under. And I'm thinking and I'm just grabbing for anything to get out of that water. And that's why it's like he's just grabbing at anything to help him find his son. And that's all he wants. 
See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. But I'd like to, and the fact that um, I'm just doing a transcript now of, of a woman who'd been speaking to him on Messenger. I'm just typing it all up now. I haven't done them for about a week or so, so I thought I'd start picking it up again. And he goes, you'll all be eating crow when this all comes out. I thought, will we? I don't think so. Because you can't tell me that there's all these true crime people, yeah? And we're all coming up with the same conclusion. We're all coming up with the same conclusion. I said about those lights on that video. I said those two big lights were, and I said this weeks ago, months ago actually. I said those big lights came from here. I flipping weeks ago I said the big lights came from here. But I don't know if them are lights either. They could be lights. So it could be those lights we're seeing. But it's definitely from those house, right? So when I was watching the mob crew, I thought I said that flipping when this first come out, when that video of the lights first come out, I said, no, 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 those lights are from this garage. I said it then. <laughs> but I was wrong in one way because I thought they'd come down this way. Right? I thought they'd come down this way, all the way down here to here. Right? And then somehow got into the car, pulled away. But they hadn't, they'd come across that way. And then the car's reversed back round, picked them up, gone down. A lot of activity around this house. If only they had cameras. But saying that, there was reports ages ago, near the beginning of this case, that several people reported that their wind doorbells and their home security cameras all glitched. They all glitched on that night. On the Sunday night, the wind doorbells and home security cameras all glitched, meaning there was no footage. Because the, all the security cameras went down. So it's like, hmm. And it was mentioned then, perhaps someone was using a, um, a signal jammer to jam all these home securities. Because they've all, they've all got to have some sort of security on their houses. These are nice houses. You know what I mean? They've got a lot of cars outside. Yeah? They've got a lot of cars outside these houses, these ones. Right? This house, it's got security because it's got a boat and a lot of other cars outside this house. You're telling me this house over here had no security and they've got these cars here? No security at all on their, on their cars. So, I'm not sure if that is a camera, you know what I mean? That could be a camera.
but I'm not sure if that's a camera. So you got all these cars and a nice house. You're gonna have some home security, aren't you? I know I would, because no one, if I had a house like that, I'm sorry, but no, if I had a house like this, right, yeah, like this, you wouldn't even, you'd step onto that, uh, you'd step onto that, that slab, and my security cameras would be catching every flipping move you made. Not there. Possibly not there, because otherwise you've got to catch all the cars, aren't you? But you step on there, or anywhere here, I got cameras front, back, side, everywhere. I knew a house where I, where, where I grew up in Birmingham. They had cameras on the front of the house, two cameras on the front, uh, two on the side, point, one pointing down on the side, and one pointing into the back, and the same on the other side, one pointing into the back. So, like, two cameras on the back, one side, one camera each on the side of the house, and two cameras on the front of the house, and I thought, flipping out, that's like Fort Knox. You're not getting in that house, are you? Without being seen. So, and that house was nothing compared to these houses. So, I'm wondering if the signal jammer, like, you know when you parked here, as well, was to jam these signals on these houses. I really do. And then it's pulled around here. Like about here, like about there. Yeah, I think it was in the middle of the road, about here, and I think it was trying to jam and stop their recording. I really do, because it doesn't make sense for him to stop pull the car up there. It doesn't. Right, does not make sense for him to pull the car from there around and then have to reverse back to pick him up. Oh, God. Right. So, but I do think there's a trial run on the Friday morning. And then over the weekend, they've sat and discussed it and and go down to a fine art. That's just my opinion. I don't think it is an outsider. All the neighbours. <laughs> Some people saying he's a trudge. He isn't. Saying that this guy here, it's like, no, he isn't. I've been following him for a while now, so. And he does a lot of work, and he always brings up new cases. Every time he goes live, he brings up a new case, just to highlight it at the beginning. It's because there's a lot, I think there's maybe, I could be speaking out of place here, but I think it could be a bit of jealousy. And I don't know why, because we're all, everyone is working for the same outcome, right? And I will tell you this, not one YouTuber, unless they are out, feet on the, boots on the ground, unless it's boots on the ground, you are not going to find this child, right? You won't find them anyway because it, it'll be law enforcement. They're just sitting on their backsides for this big tip to come in and then they take all the credit. 
So it'll be law enforcement or TBI or FBI will find this child. None of us YouTubers, right? We're just here to highlight this case, to get this child's name out there, to get his picture out there, and to talk about what we see and what we hear. And that is it. <coughs> so we're not going to find him. Maybe someone rescue Seb. All our neighbours that have come collectively over the past few days before missing out being lightning. Yes, someone mentioned, wasn't it on his channel someone put that up? Be interesting to see what um, any video footage from the 23rd. You know what I mean? At that time in the morning. Because at the moment, even if they found them, yeah? Say they found Sebastian and he's alive, I pray to God he is. And they find the people who've got him, right? They'll have a field day at court with that video. Because they're going to say, no, I do you know that was Sunday night. That, that stopped on Friday. You know what I mean? It could have been... This car could have been there Friday night, could have been there Saturday night, we don't know. And that is, people talk about their why views, yeah. Yes, I think so as well. She took him out and he did a lot for a lad who's autistic. What? And I've got a grandson who's autistic, and the grandson I have on the weekend, which I've just took home this weekend, today, is being assessed for the wait, the wait for the appointment to come through, to be assessed for ADHD, right? And we know when he does too much in a day, he, it's, it's, it's sensory overload. Like, he don't like going, like, if we go to the shops, oh, my God, I hate going to the shops because you literally have to tell him, say you've got five places you want to go, you have to tell him first, we're going to this shop, and he'll go to that shop. But you've got to go in, get what you need, and come out. You can't mess about. You can't go, oh, look at this. And go looking around. You've got to go in and get what you want and get out. Then when you come out of that shop, you say, right, we just got to go to this shop now. So then he'll go to that shop. But if you say to him, right, we've got this shop, this shop, this shop, this shop to go to. He'll have a meltdown. He'll have a complete meltdown. You have to give him one shop at a time. So he's, he can... Uh, focus on just getting through that shop, you know what I mean? Because of the different noises, the different sounds, the smells, everything. Yeah, I don't think he even played out in the house. I think he played at all times in the bedroom. He was always playing in his bedroom. He never played in the house. And yet they had plenty of room for him to play out there. And as she said, she used to do arts and crafts with him. No, she didn't. Perhaps when he was a baby, a little boy maybe, but not when he was 15. So, but yeah, she gave him a good day. Too much. It was sensory overload. He was not going to go to sleep that night. Not even with the medication. It was too much. And yet Chris will go sit there and say, no, it wasn't sensory overload. How do you know you weren't there? And I'm sure he said in an interview, I'm going to look back at the transcripts. He said, from what I saw, when I, what I saw of him on video, he was having a good day. I'm thinking, what video? What video? You know what I mean? Or was it where you went live, like, you know, you do a live chat video call? 
I'm thinking perhaps that because if they've got video of him from that Sunday out, wasn't wasn't no one seeing that? Hi. Oh, I'm gonna make a right pixel of your name. So I'm just gonna call you Gypsy Karma Moon. Sorry about that, bro. Good to have you in chat. No, I don't think she did. I think, right, he's 15 years old. He's not going to want to sit there and do baby stuff like crafts and painting and making sticky little things together. You know what I mean? It's 15. It's not 15 months. It's 15 years. Right? Even, Seb even Seth said, when you hear Katie talk about Sebastian and Chris, they talk about him as though he was a six, seven-year-old. They don't talk about him as a 15-year-old. So it just makes me wonder, this whole scenario of his, he's done, I know he's done some brilliant work, well, and I think certain people are just a bit jealous. I don't know. But instead of putting each other down, work with each other. You know what I mean? Come together and work with each other. Because, you know, they're not going to find him. As I said, law enforcement are sitting there on their backside waiting for that big tip to come. He even said that in the last press interview. He did. We're just waiting for that big tip to come in and open this case wide open. So that's what they're doing. They're just sitting there, waiting for someone to ring in. And then, they go out, they find Sebastian, they take all the glory. And they've done nothing. But people like this guy here, Chris, I think his name is, he's worked hard. He went out and he's done his own. And what I like about this, yeah, I'm going to show you this. It's further up. Right? Yeah. He did tests, right? He went out and he was doing tests himself. Right, watch. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's the headlamp. It's too bright. you got that shadow, haven't you? You've got that. Yeah. I think it's the cell phone screen only.
Yeah. This is interesting, though. This is very interesting. Who's muted? I'm not. SG, I'm not muted. No. Turn it up a bit more, but highest G anyway. Holy gentleman is I thought you've met me. You had me checking my flipping Oh my lord. <laughs> No, it's not. Oh, I'll turn him up. I noticed it, and I'm not a driver. Can you hear him now? Oh, I'm done. Hold on. I don't understand how you can hear me, but not him. Because he's not muted. I've not got him muted. He's all up. So... Anyone else not hearing the video? Let me know if you're not hearing that video. I'll play it again. Let me know if you're not hearing it. Let me know if you can't hear him still. Anyone? I know that's G said you can't go. Right, I'm going to go out of this video. I'm going to go out of here. Go out of this. And come back into it. I'll come out and I'll come back into it. Because sometimes it could be... I don't know. Come on. Because the volumes are all up on everything, so I'm not understanding why you're not leaving him.
Can you hear me now? Because I've just gone out. Yeah, now I kick my lights on. Now I put it in reverse. Notice the, the light. Well, I'll tell you what he's doing. You can hear. Yes, you can hear it now. There's, there's going to be a huge thing that's going to stick out here. Painting it. Move for some bad weather. Thunderstorms, apparently. Okay. Here, just a minute. Curious to see who sees it. All right. Now, below us uh, is the uh, video. Keep in mind, this video uh, with the car light, you know, is kind of slowed down. So keep that in mind as well. Oh, yeah, here's me walking to the car. But I, I, I try to edit it this as much as I could as fast as I was good. But, but man, look how fast uh, the lights come on, even when it's slow. It's it's pretty wild. But there's something that stuck out uh, when I did this. Uh, I did thought I kind of edit the part where I'm walking to my car. But here is me, but something's going to stick out here in just a minute. And so there's the car. It's running. Now I turn my headlights on. Notice uh, headlights get brighter and the taillights come on, right? And then we almost have that uh, kind of uh, exclamation point uh, with the lights. But here, um, I, I was trying all different angles just in case, you know, like I could see something, but this is when it hit me when I came back. All right, so now I turn my car off, right? So the car is off. Keep that in mind. The car is off. I'm sure you guys can read. Now turning the car on. So notice, notice what comes on when I turn on the ignition. Do you guys see that? <clears throat> oh, thank you so much, Luna. You guys are amazing. Okay. Here we go. So, you guys notice something different yeah, that about these two of. scenarios right here? So, this is the video, right? And the lights are just going to, you know, with the video, uh, with the surveillance, the lights just kick right on, right? Just boom. I mean, they're, they're so fast, I have to, like, slow the video down. My car's running, right? But my headlight switch is not on. Um, so hopefully there's some car enthusiast, enthusiasts in here that can help uh, help me out. But... Uh, it hit me like a ton of bricks when I came back to look at this. Now I turn my headlights on, right? To kind of recreate uh, the lights, right? And then clearly we know that this person or the suspicious, the suspicious vehicle, uh, after turning on the lights, they clearly hit their brakes and they're uh, reversed because we can see the reverse lights come on. 
Uh, but here. Okay, one last time. Anybody notice something? Uh, let me get to chat real quick, and then we're going to talk about it. Yep. Uh, no skylights. Mama Rizza? I hope I said that right. That's Thank right. you so much for becoming a member, supporting the channel. You were awesome. Baby kisses. Nice work, Chris. Thank you so much for the $2. Oh, we got so much more. Connie Brighton with Gift and One Mob Crew membership. Okay. This is what comes on on a car when you've got daylight, whatever. Yeah. You turn your car on, you get these lights will automatically come on. So on all, all the time when you're driving daytime. Right? This one here. No daylight. Transmission or whatever it's called. So when they turn on their man lights, they come on automatically. Yeah. Yep, you are awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, and again, if by chance you donate like Venmo or PayPal, uh, please just let my mods know so I can thank you guys. Because, um, again, um, I will do whatever I can. I will do more experiments. I do have another one planned because uh, there, there's a few more things that I'm curious about. All right. Does anybody know something? Um, I'm going to tell you right now uh, the initials D R D R L D R L. Does I guarantee this car did not shoot off their? I'm telling. I can guarantee this car did not turn off their car. That car is running, in my opinion. Yeah. This car does not have daytime running lights. Daytime running there lights. There we go. Kristen King coming in. Daytime running lights. See, he's got daytime running lights. <laughs> this car here doesn't... I, here's, here's me trying to reenact. Like, I'm thinking, okay, maybe there's a chance they turn this car off, right? And then they kick on the ignition and lights. I I couldn't even do it as fast as they could. Even when I slowed theirs down. I mean, look how fast theirs. No, nah, I didn't line it up just right because I was, again. But here's me turning it on. Um, maybe this is not the one where I tried to do it real fast. No, I don't think this is the one I did. Uh, but there's one where I turn the car off uh i turn the ignition and then i try to flip the switch real fast and i i couldn't even get those lights to go as fast and, and you can you could tell like it's switching even when if it when it's gone fast you know so but that doesn't all it means is that car that was parked there didn't have the daytime running lights on setting on or oh, it could be a car that is older, which hasn't got that on it. Because some of the cars, you, like, they have the daytime running on, but you can disable it. You can switch it off so that the lights aren't on during the day. Could that have been what they've done on that, just turned off the daytime lights? So that they're not running all day. Or is it an older car which doesn't have DTR? But I, I thought, wow, yeah. I noticed straight away when you shake my mouth, hold on, you've got a lot of wife. You know what I mean? Both cars are turned on. If your ignitions are both on, how come you've got that light on and that car below in the video hasn't? Then when you turn your main lights on, he's come on. That car comes on even quicker than he's. So, and I don't know much about cars. I, well, I know some do all about cars. Someone said to me, what color, what type of car was it? I'd say, 
I would say it's either got two goals and a half back or it's got four goals. And a half back or five goals, whatever they call them. You know what I mean? It's got four wheels, four doors, and it goes from A to B. <laughs> That's what I know about cars. Right? So, um, I find that very interesting. But as someone said, they go on their car and they have it turned off. They just turn it off on their car. So, just means it could be a newer like 2000 mark range car right but they just have that s switched off and because i can't see it being an older but then again it's like people are going on about that uh the car bhb for, say, believes it is, right? Which is fine, right? Because I must admit it does line up, right? With the lights and everything. But the lights on this are straight down, go straight down. The lights on the Q10 or QX10 or whatever don't go straight down. And so, I don't know, but I think that's what people, certain YouTubers are saying, oh, well, can't be that car, it's got to be this car, oh, no, it's got to be the sedan, no, it's not. And I don't see the point in arguing. You've all got your own opinions, you've all got your own views. Just go with what you believe, you know what I mean? So, anyway, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> and, um, because my internet's playing up. You just notice how the lights, oh, it was um, is this the video right here where I do it? This might be the one where I do it. I might have been out of frame when I did it. It was. Yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, so I, I tried to attempt it. I'm sorry, I... My camera is way back, and I, I didn't realize I was kind of out of frame there. But, yeah, I was trying to, like, have the car off and then kick it on and hit those flashlights. and Or flashlights. The headlights as fast as I could. But you could tell. I mean, we, we would have seen that, right? We would have seen, you know, a lower light and then headlights, right? So this car... um. It's not up to date on running lights on. In my opinion, again, I'm not a car expert, but I, I've been trying to do a lot of research. And anybody like a mechanic in here knows a lot about cars can uh, kind of help me with this. But uh, for what I understand, there's there's certain makes and models that uh, are kind of known to not have uh, daytime running lights. Um, I must admit, I was coming home today from my son's. After taking my grandson home. And I stood there. And I was looking at the cars. And it's the first time I noticed the daytime running lights. I thought, oh my God, yeah, they've got the lights on. But they're not the, the main beam. It's not the main beam. Right, and I thought. I've always heard about people saying, like, you've left your lights on. You know what I mean? And now I know what they mean. You've got your lights on. But they automatically come on on some cars. They automatically just come on. I, I don't know if you can turn it off on all cars. But someone said there are cars. <laughs> My cat's being a pain again. Right. He likes bags. My bags. Any bag. It's one of these cats. I could just imagine him collecting bags. Anyway, so 
but there was some big side on this. Like, there are some cars you can set it so just hit the switch so they don't have the daytime running lights on. So it might be they've just done that. You know what I mean? Perhaps they don't like to have their daytime running lights on. But I stood there today and I thought, wow. Even the buses. And I thought, I've never, I've not really took much notice of cars before. But then I found myself, as I walk, like, because I use public transport, because I do not drive. I have not got the patience to drive. No, no. I'd be locked up for road rage, you know. Right? And I got the bus and I was walking down through this car park to get to my, where I live. And I'm actually looking at the rear of cars for lights, for the way the lights sit on the cars. I thought, oh my God, Ange, you're even doing this as you're walking home. You're not at home and you're outside and you're, you're checking cars. For the lights, how they sit on the back of the car, you're looking at the daytime lighting and all this lot. I'm thinking, I've got to have a break. I need a break. It's getting, it's getting too overwhelming. Well, I'm learning a lot by doing this channel. I've learned a lot. I must admit, especially on this case. I've learned so much doing this case. Like about security and ring doorbells and uh, electronic jammers. Get out. Electronic jammers and hi, Karen. Massachusetts is in the house. Right, so it's um. So much, and this is intriguing. This case has got me from day one. I, I have backed off it a bit because I've been looking at other cases, and I'm going to look, look at that one you mentioned. That was mentioned earlier. See what I go. How you been, Karen? Right, so, um, hope you've been keeping well, everyone. So, it's just so intriguing. Oh, so if you say you've got a car that has got the daytime running lights, yeah, but you cannot switch it off. Like some cars, you can switch it off. Perhaps you've got a car that can't be switched off. Yeah. They could have blacked it out with tape. Then once they've got off the off of that area onto the main road, took the tape off because you don't want to be stopped by the police, do you? So they probably took the, if that is the case, if they put tape on it, they'd have pulled up on. Just before going on the main road and ripping that tape off. So, yeah, they could have done that. But then, if they did that, the headlights wouldn't show. You know what I mean? The headlights wouldn't have lit up like they did. But let's get. So, I think. I'm sorry. So I'm trying to shut the jar. I brought a jar today right, for my peanuts to go in. Because when I'm sitting here I'm at my laptop doing whatever I'm doing, I sit here munching on my peanuts. It's good to have you here. Anyway, so I seriously do believe they showed Chris and Seth the video of the garbage truck but not this video not the earlier part 
they wanted Chris and Seth to go out there and tell us all it's not what we believe it is, it is a garbage truck. Okay, and to be honest with you, I believe Seth, I thought, okay, it's a garbage truck, so I backed off it. I really did back off this. Then, a few weeks ago, someone said something, and I pulled up it, I went through it all again. And I thought, what are we missing on this video? What are we missing? There's something missing. You know what I mean? Because I said from day one, I always wondered, like, you know, when we seen that first video, and all we seen was this, at the very bottom of it, was this light source. And we didn't know what it was. I was going, what's that light source? What's that? And I couldn't fathom it out. And then it was only when we got the fuller video that we realised then, ooh, that's a car. Not, a, and that's when they're coming out telling us, no, it isn't a car, it's a garbage truck. No, you can't pull the wool over our eyes. So, that's trying to spin a story with Chris and Seth by showing them the garbage truck. Look, we told you, it's a garbage truck. See, the time's 3.11. But as Seth said, that time never changed. It was 3.11 from the moment he started watching that video with the garbage truck to the moment he stopped watching it. They didn't show them. I don't believe they showed them the bit with the little lights. I really don't. They switch for headlights. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You know what I mean? But I swear to God, these cats are going to kill them. What was that? <laughs> they want to go to bed. I know what they want. Because it's, 10, it's gone 10 o'clock. They want bedtime. John Q made a great point on his channel. That ditch is almost five inches deep. Five foot deep. He believes the doctors walked along down in the ditch so it's not to be seen by cameras. Well, I said that. I did say, when I first seen that video with the lights, yeah, I said, I come onto Google, I can, and I said, there's a ditch that goes all the way along, all the way up. And I thought, at first, the lights were coming all the way down this ditch. Right? All the way down. Because the car was parked round about here. So they come all the way down this ditch to there and come over to the car. And that's what I truly believed. When I went back and looked at the video of the lights again, that's what I... I picked up where I left off. I thought, you know, they come all the way down this ditch. All the way down. Right, let's see if I can get in closer. Right. Oh, it's not going to let me. No. So it's not going to let me get down, get any closer. But this is where the lights come through, here. So there's a lot of activity going on that night with lights. Surely they would have heard something. You know what I mean? And then the car that was parked here, when they got out of the car, is come round here. Come on. Right, parked up round about here, yeah, because of that light there, and them two lights over there, which I first mentioned 
months ago when this video first came out. And I was all saying, oh, there's a ruckus outside their garage. I went, no, can't be outside their garage because the garage of those lights is coming from this angle. Not, you know what I mean? You can't see their garage. But it does go quite deep, apparently. Didn't look that deep here, but further on it might do. But as I said, the first time, when you see them coming across. But right, hold on, let me have a look. See, it comes. It's sort of like evens out here. The ditch seems to even out a bit and then dips again here. Right? Dips, starts to even out. Right, so, so you can see where it's even, getting even, yeah? And as we know, the car was parked round about here. Round about here somewhere. So, they could, could they have come all this way and not gone? But... The mob crew said he's going off information that he's been told by neighbours in the area that those lights went behind that house, in between them two houses. Right? So, and I believe that. I really do believe they went behind this house between anywhere around there. Hold on, let's try and get round there a bit better. Oh. I really do believe they cut across and come through this way. Yeah, because I'm thinking that wasn't just when. It goes quite deep up towards uh, Sebastian's house. I don't know if you could walk it. But they didn't walk it all. Because if you watch that video of the lights when they're coming from the house, yeah? They come from the house and then they disappear in the trees. And the ditch, and they take the time, it takes a couple of seconds, yeah, for them to get down that ditching out again, right? And then walk to wherever is standing here, yeah, wherever is standing down here, they walk over to. Then you see the light go back. Right, you see the light go back. So they, they come from the house and they come across very slowly at first. Right? And then come out the ditch up onto here. Then when that uh, second light goes back, it goes a lot quicker. It moves quicker. Because there's no one with that person. When they was coming across, there was two people. There was two. I don't know if I can sh if you'd be able to see it again. I think we'd have to go back. Let's just see. Right. I think this is the one, right? Yeah, we'll start here. We'll, I'll share this and I'll stop it again because that one light, subject two, right, when it stops round about here, when they start doing whatever it is they're doing here, it looks like two people. It really does. So let's just 
run this, okay? Hopefully you'll hear it again. Um, so I do apologize, Zach, because I, I know some people are talking about that. So, again, this is just a scenario. If it was an outside job, you would have two people um, getting out, if that makes sense. It wasn't an outside job. It was not. <clears throat> but then if it was an inside job, clearly you would just have one person who seems to be maybe a spotter. You know, and then you could say KP, C, you know, maybe it's CP's here or this is CP, you know. Um, and, you know, one is really just kind of coming across and then the other one really doesn't go far. And it's almost like they're there to just kind of keep an eye on, you know, transferring Sebastian over. And then at some point, this car uh, begins to move up closer and which is really interesting i i don't know why they did that here's me overlaying uh with a different uh because I, I wanted to give kind of a different look because i've overlaid this a bunch of times i, and I stop this thing wanted and to do it I'm with sure. a different yeah, background. You know I mean. uh, shout out to steve crabtree you know he went out there and got some pictures and amazing drone footage he was you know uh I believe working, he works for, I think, uh, for the cell phone company. And, um, so he, he's a local anyway, he was getting me some shots cause I, you know, I wanted to overlay from a lower view. Uh, but unfortunately there's just so much foliage on trees that overlaying the lights with the pictures he sent me, even though it was, it was so amazing that he did that for me. Uh, it, it was just hard because, you know, you can't really see what's going on. So I found this one where it's basically um, a photo taken in 2007 where there's less trees and foliage. So we can really see where these lights are coming Rob, from. What's this now? And so, again, we see the light clearly coming. If you're not familiar, this is um, this is the Rogers home here. And then we have the home with the three uh, garage doors with the floodlights. Yeah. Clearly, subject two is coming out between them then we notice it disappears pretty quickly. Now, what we have is a ditch, and as it goes along back here, it gets fairly deep. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly. I've heard like th uh, anywhere from three to five uh, feet. I guess it depended on where you're at with that ditch. Uh, it's pretty deep when it gets back there. So I think what we're seeing is them uh, disappearing because they're in the ditch now, and then we have subject one who's just kind of hanging out between the two homes, um, perhaps just kind of waiting. Uh, again, depending on which way you, you swing, whether inside or outside job, um, you know, waiting for Sebastian to get Sebastian over. Um, but then it seems uh, subject one then does appear to move behind the home, so we cannot see him. And then here we have subject two. Now we see a spot where oh, uh, I'm gonna just get notice they kind of stall right here. Um, well, I'm gonna make this bigger, right? Now, watch this. Right, I'll see if I can slow it down. Playback speed. No, no, we want it slowed down, okay? So I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Just kind of See what I mean? It looks like definitely two people. Three. See? See? Oh, God, where have I gone? I've gone back to the beginning. Sorry. Nope. You know, you can't really see what's going on. So I found this one where it's basically um, a photo taken in 2007 where there's less trees and foliage so we can really see where these lights so are you coming can still from. see the two people and so again we see the light clearly coming if you're not familiar this is 
Um, this is the Rogers home here, and then we have the home with the three uh, garage doors with the floodlights. Clearly, subject two is coming out between them. Then we notice it disappears pretty quickly. Now, what we have is a ditch, and as it goes along back here, it gets fairly deep. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly. I've heard like th uh, anywhere from three to five uh, feet. I guess it depended on where you're at with that ditch. Uh, it's pretty deep when it gets back there. So I think what we're seeing is them uh, disappearing because they're in the ditch now. And then we have subject one who's just kind of hanging out between the two homes. Um, perhaps just kind of waiting. Uh, again, depending on which way you, you swing, whether inside or outside job. Um, you know, waiting for Sebastian to get Sebastian over. Um, but then it seems, uh, subject one then does appear to move behind the home, so we cannot see him. And then here we have subject two. Now we see a spot where, um, notice they kind of stall right here. Um, no, just check it back a sec. I'm gonna slow it down a bit more. Roger's home here, and then we have the home with the three uh three uh anywhere from three to five uh feet i guess it depending on where you're at with that ditch uh it's pretty deep when it gets back there so i think what we're seeing is them uh disappearing because I'm going to turn the volume off on this yeah. thing, right? Because I'm letting the video run, but I can't stand the voice being slowed down. But I've slowed it down so that you can try and make out if it's one or two people. I sat, I clearly see two people. I'm going to pop up any mini. If I slow it down too much. I think I have. Oh, come on. Don't want to speak it up a bit anymore. Oh, hang on. No, I'll speak it up just to 0.75. Look, see that light? It's two people. It's going to stop in a minute. He'll move it his little cursor. He'll move it out of the way. See what I mean? Oh. There's definitely two people there. Definitely two people. Hi, Truth Seeker. Good to have you here. Right, definitely two people cutting across there. Right, and I think someone said an interesting thing as well, because I used to use these in my job. The covers, shoe covers, yeah. Um, and I know when I've had maintenance people coming to do work in my where i live they put them on this on over the boots as well they have to by law they have to they can get in trouble if they don't and 
I used to wear one because I used to be a community care worker. So I used to price them over my shoes, especially if I it was wet and snowy and there's snow on the ground. You don't want to be traipsing in with wet shoes around someone's house. So I used to pop them on over my shoes. I'm wondering, did she get in because she had me in a black top that is wearing a black top? Black trousers, black rimmed glasses, right? Um, but no shoes. Now we all know he don't like going outside with no shoes on. So Chris said, like, "Well, look, we're going to play this game. You're going to be that ninja, right?" Perhaps he didn't have any really dark colour, like black colour trainers or pumps or boots. Whatever. That might have been a beige or a white. I don't know. Alright, so she called your policy. Slip these on over your feet. That way your feet aren't going to get dirty. Right? You'll be okay. And she's got them to wear them while out. Because... Another thing that bothers me is we know there's two people there coming across from that house. We know it. You can see two people. If you stop it at a certain point, you can see it actually two two figures, right? If this was a stranger abduction, I... They would have had to put something over his mouth to stop him from shouting and screaming because he was not he would not go with a stranger. He's gonna be screaming and shouting and kicking and playing out, isn't he? He's gonna do anything to get away from them because he don't know them. So it had to be someone he knew who brought him from that house across to there. Right? So someone he knew. Brought him from here, a load of trees in this garden, through here into the ditch, maybe walked along a little bit, and climbed out round about here, and then cut across to here. Then whoever handed she whoever handed Sebastian over to whoever, right? Because we know that second person. Quickly, very quickly, went stra- went back. Very quickly, compared to when it was coming, went back very quickly towards the house. We know that you can see the light. So whoever was handed Sebastian was handed over to, he must have known that person because Christ, you're in between two houses. He's going to make some noise. He's going to scream. He's going to. Shout, he's going to do something if he's with a stranger. So it had to be someone he knew to get him to go along with him to get in the car. That's my opinion. What about Sebastian wearing KP shoes? Well, what size was Sebastian? Um, did I hear, was he a 10? I don't know what, uh, size 10 Sebastian was, um, what size was Chris, does anyone know what size Chris was? Hi Robbie, does anyone know what size, yeah, yeah. Because she was the only one in the house at the end of the night, wasn't she? She was the only one in the house in the morning. Twelve. It's possible. Possible. Because there's certain shoes. I'm a size four. Right? I'm only small foot. But certain shoes... I have to go to a four and a half or a five. If I can't get the four and a half, I have to go to the five. Because my feet feel like they're being squished in. 
like in certain trainers, they feel like they've been squished in. Even the boots I wear, my my clop up and ankle boots. Right, um, low size five, so that I've got space around my the top of my toes and everything, so I'm not feeling crunched in. So it could be it was carried. It yeah, but if that ditch is like three to five foot deep, it's gonna be pretty hard getting in. In and out of that ditch, you know what I mean? If she's going, but if you look at that video that I was just showing, it shows right here. I'll see if I can get back again to where it was just right. I'm just gonna get back just a little bit right. Let's see from here. I'm gonna stop it in a minute. Because he's, he's going to show two people. See, there's one dot, two dots. There's two people there, and one's not being carried. Right? Plus, didn't Chris have them bite marks on his arm? Right. He had bite marks on his arm. I think that's when Katie handed Sebastian over to Chris. I think, you know when we're seeing him stop there? Where uh, something's going on there, where they're not moving. Yeah, I think Sebastian realised something was going on there when he seen maybe Chris or someone else. I don't know. But when he realised there was someone else there, he's clicked on and he's not happy. Right? But wouldn't he been shouting out or giving out a cry or something to bring attention to it? He's in between two houses, he's 15 years old, he's not, he's autistic, but they're not stupid children, they're very clever. Right, and then you see Chris, like, with those bite marks and scratches on his arm. I think that was Sebastian. Once he got handed over to whoever, I'm not saying, just thinking, it's just, What's the word I'm looking for? I'm not accusing anyone. It's just out there, okay? But he's got those scratch marks. And he said they came from the dogs. Oh, and that's another thing. Where are those poor dogs? I've heard they got rid of those dogs. Don't know how true that is. I was watching a YouTube channel the other night. And someone was, I was watching the chat. And someone said, what about the Morkies? Morkies. And um, where were they? And someone said, allegedly. Thank you, Robbie. Allegedly. Right? But someone said, where's the dogs? And someone said, apparently, they've got rid of the dogs. And those were Sebastian's dogs. Yet again, if this is true... If that is true, yet again, another animal they've got rid of, of Sebastian's. And why did they get rid of the dogs? Oh, yeah. Because Justin did something, I seen Justin, he'd done it a while ago and he was just re, um, re going over it the other day. And he took the print of that bite mark on his arm, right, and placed it over Sebastian's face. No, they didn't get, a, got rid of them and got a puppy for faith. No way. That 
that is just sick. I'm sorry. But why would why would they do that if they thought their son was gonna come home? You would do that if you knew your son was not coming home. And because people are focusing on these lights now, right? I think the FBI have done their work. I think the FBI have been doing their work on these lights. And that's why they put that reward out of $50,000. That's big money. They're not messing about now. Right? They want Sebastian found one way or the other. They're not messing about the FBI now. They know some of the county aren't doing anything because some of the county said they've only allocated one one sheriff each day to look at to uh look at this case. One sheriff each day. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. So I think the FBI have been looking at these lights. And they are I'm not telling you they'll be probably be following Chris. The mob crew, that would be following his crew. Because he's good at editing and overlaying. Yep. They went off with that impression that the story that they gave him that he was a runaway. And they should never... I think they have info that leads, to, leads someplace. Yes, they definitely know something. Right, so, and I think because people have been focusing on this, right, it's come to the point where it's forced their hands. Look, we've got to sort this out now. We've got to work on this and get this sorted because they're getting too close. And if we get too close, it could scare someone off. That's okay. That's okay. I talk a lot about different YouTube channels, right? And I do acknowledge them. No, I don't mind. I'm praying he's found either way. Yes, he needs to be brought home. And People say, but you can't judge the parents, the father, the mother and the stepfather. We're not actually judging them. We're looking at how they react and how they and how they talk. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I know. I think all these creators that are doing this, I I don't know nothing about editing. I want to go. I want to learn because I'd love to be able to do this sort of thing. You know what I mean? Because this intrigues me. Uh, but I don't know what app I need. You know what I mean? I I don't mind paying for it either. If it's a good app and I know how to use it and it's easy to use, then I will pay for it each month. Fair enough. Also, doing different things collectively can help. Besides, you. yeah, if everyone has got information like this, just pull together, right? And work together on this. It would be a lot easier. And you get a lot further. Without criticising one for this. And crit you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, why? We're all here for one thing. And that is Sebastian. Just sit down and work together. Law enforcement didn't lie on BHB. Paperwork is public from law enforcement. Well, I don't know, I don't, 
really understand what happened with B.I.B. All I know is she got arrested. And it wasn't for a parole violation. Apparently, it's for hashtags. Now, if that's the case, I could get, I could have a, get arrested. Everyone who uses hashtags could get arrested. You know what I mean? CP enjoys giving animals to children and enjoys taking them away when child. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it is classic. He don't... He... I heard he don't want his daughter. It's his mother that wants the daughter. Wasn't it Nina that said that? That isn't Chris that wants the daughter. He's fighting for her. But it's the mother that's pushing him to fight for her. BHB didn't show up for court. That's not true about hashtags. BHB. I'm going to say, because when I heard that, I must admit, I thought, hold on. Everyone uses hashtags. And I thought, she should have gone to court that day. She, The reason why they sided with Katie and Kathy and whatever his name is, is because Bullhorn, BHB wasn't there, her attorney wasn't there, so the judge had no other nervous way of dealing with this case but giving it to Katie. If, Bullo, if BHB had turned up with her attorney and put out the facts, right, she might have had a chance of winning that. But she didn't turn up. And if, now if, if that was me and my attorney told me not to turn up and then I got arrested for not turning up, I'd be ripping into my attorney. I don't like when people make posts about the B&B &B issues. Just stick... Yeah. Yeah. That's what I say. I don't want to get dragged into all that drama. I, I got dragged into drama very early on and then I went, no, and I put the brakes on. Right? Put the brakes on. <laughs> and then I started going back from the beginning. But then it got to the point where nothing new was coming out. It was just all BS coming out. All right? In-house fight between uh, TikTok Tony, Seth, Chris, Katie, and all that lot. It was just a shit show. Right? I thought, you know what? There's other missing children out there that need our attention. So I started focusing on other children as well. And I still do now. And I don't go every night with Sebastian. I go maybe, if something new comes up or something I hear comes out and I think, oh, then I'll go live. But unless something new comes out, like I knew about this all weekend and I thought, I'm not going live. I've got my grandkids here. Right? Yep. So I, I, I just, do it when something comes out now. Like tomorrow night, I'm looking at the um, uh, Magdalene Soto case again. All right, but I'm looking at some of the interviews of Jane Soto. And I think it's the interview where they're going to the police station or whatever for the press interview. Press thing. So, we'll be looking at that tomorrow if you're interested. But, no, I only do Sebastian now when anything new comes out. Oh, yeah. Exactly, Karen. Right? Now, I'm just worried. Because of that incident I had with my grandson had yesterday at the park with this lad. Who is lucky he isn't six foot under. Right? Because I swear to God, 
If I could have jumped that fence into that play area, I would have. And I could put this lad six foot under for what he said to him. For I, what they did to him first, because I seen him on the ground and I said, you okay, like? And he said, yeah, I just thought it fell over. But I thought it was a bit iffy because where there was, there was he going to be. These two lads were hiding behind part of the climbing frame. And then my grandson comes back up onto this climbing frame. And he goes, Gran, I went, yeah. He said, that lad pushed me. I went, is that when you fell over? He said, yeah. I said, why can you tell me, sweetheart? Right. And I said, but I thought he did. And this other lad, there's two of them, and this other lad's gone, well, he pushed in. I said, believe me, if my grandson had pushed your friend, he would have gone flying. Because my grandson is built like a flipping tank. Six years old and he's like a flipping tank. Seven in October, but he's crossed. When he comes running to me, I, I shake. When I see him running down the hallway towards me, I'm shaking. I'm thinking, oh, God, I'm going to get railroaded here by my grandson. He's just going to knock me flying. Right? And so I said, I don't believe that because your friend would have gone flying. And then this lad then had the nerve to turn round and call my grandson an F-A-T boy and my grandson is Sen is in Sen S-E-N right he's a Sen child and I heard him and when my grandson told me about this lad pushing him I said I thought he did spit off I said and I heard what you just said I said do you want to come down here or do you want me to come there and say to you, and so you can say it to my face. You know what I mean? I was fuming, fuming that they called him that. Right, he's six years old, and these lads had the nerve to call him that. Right, they left about five five minutes later. They got on the bikes and left. My grandson was playing lovely then with these three little lads in the play area, right, running around. And But then he goes, Gran, I went, yeah, he said, can we go home now? I went, yeah. So I think that put him off a bit, having those two lads do what they did and say what they said, right? Because he's very quiet all day yesterday then when we got home. He didn't want to eat the ice cream I brought him. He didn't want any supper. Which he normally has a little snack. Didn't want none of that. Right? And I was a bit worried about him because he's so quiet. And then this morning, so quiet again. And he had some biscuits, a packet of biscuits by the side of my bed. And normally, if he sees biscuits, they're gone. You know those packet of biscuits? I ate them today when I come home. He hadn't touched them. Did not touch him. Last night for his tea, he didn't eat all his tea. His lunch, he, he had um, a couple of bites of a sandwich. He didn't want the sausage roll. So he can't eat no more. So I think what they said to him yesterday, he heard what they said. And I think it's logged log, uh, up there now for him. Right? And I'm fuming. I swear to God, if I see them kids out in the street, I'm going to knock them off the flipping bikes. Oh, did you fall off your bike? What a shame. <laughs> anyway, military parents, especially step parents, that like kids that are not there, slide. They're slightly angry. They use fit. Yes! S-G-R-U Ali or former.
I think you like I said the other day over in the UK. It depends where you live. Depends on the police force you get, right? Now where I live, up in Scotland, we've got a fairly decent police force. Yes, we're lacking in numbers, right? But you do see them uh, when there's something going on, the police are there, right? But in the England, there is a two-tier policing, right? So if you're from a certain community, they tend to go lighter on you. You know what I mean? Or we won't arrest you, we'll just give you a smack on the back of the hand and off you go, don't do it again. But if you're English, it's lock them up, send them to jail for two years. You know what I mean? So it's two-tier policing, but it's not the police. It's, it's the head police above them telling them what to do. And the head police are being told what to do by the government. So it goes back to the government. The government are telling the chief of the police and all this lot and the captains, whatever they are, what they've got to do and how they've got to react to certain situations, yeah? So then the police are being told what to do. So it's not the police fault, right? So I don't know how it is in the law, law enforcement out there because you've got sheriffs, you've got... You've got state police, you've got sheriffs, you've got, you know me, you've got all different types in the US. Yeah, that is so true, Karen. So, it's hard to, I don't want, I don't want to put the police down because there are some brilliant, I'd say for every, say, 100 police or 1,000 police, you've got one bad apple, right, hypothetically. So, you can't cross all law enforcement with the same brush. You can't, because there's a lot of decent law enforcement officers out there, police officers, you name me. Yeah. So it is a sh I do feel sorry for Sebastian. I really do. Because he was crying for help and he wasn't getting it. Now, I'll tell you now, if what Chris said, right, that the woman from social child services come and said, and pulled uh, Sebastian to one side and said, you can't go about lying because you're getting, they get in trouble and you will get in trouble. If she did say that, right, and I think Seth will do this once he gets Sebastian home, I think Seth will go for child services then because he was not informed about any of these home visits that was happening. He should have been. He's 50-50. You know what I mean? So, so I think Seth will go for the child services after once he gets Sebastian home. He'll go for child services because I think that was out of order and not informing him about what was going on with his son. Well, I thought that was a bit weird at first, little funky chick. I did think that. But then I'm thinking, perhaps she's, she's thinking that Sebastian might be thinking, I can't go home now, I'm going to get into trouble. Right, if I go home now, my mum and Chris are going to go mental. Yeah. So I think that might be why she says to me.
Hmm. I don't believe in about uh, uh, using anything on a show. You know what I mean? Especially an autistic child, because as I said, they don't understand a lot of what they've done. They don't understand that maybe something they've done is wrong. They don't understand that. Why? Because my grandson, who had the weekend, as I said, he's built like a tank. Right? And he, he towers above all his other friends in his class. Towers above them all. He's tall as well as well built. Right? And um, he doesn't understand that when he's playing, he's being too hard or too rough. He doesn't understand that. He just sees himself as playing because he doesn't realise his own strength. He doesn't. Yeah, and did you know that law enforcement didn't give TBI a copy of CPS reports? Because when Seth got the CPS reports, TBI got in touch with him and asked for a copy and he said, if you want the uh, unredacted form, get in touch with Sumner County. They've had it from the day one. They've had the unredacted child CPS report from day one, and they never gave it to TBI. Five eleven. <laughs> oh god no yeah, my my one my one grandson is lovely he's just perfect you know what i mean perfect for his age and his height right he's just starting to feel like a bit more now right but the one i have on the weekend i don't have him every weekend I have him once a fortnight and oh he's a tank but i love him i wouldn't have him any other way but I do think his mum is going to go talk to the doctors because she thinks it could be thyroids or something because he doesn't eat big meals. He doesn't. And he's always on the go. You walk to the shop, he don't walk, he, he's running. You go into the park, he don't walk, he's running. He's always on the go. And we can't understand why he's not burning it off. Yeah. Yeah, I do believe that. Because he's probably thinking if the child support woman did say that to him, right, and then I've sat down and Chrissy said, see, eat your dinner. You're not getting rid of me. But I think he did, right? Um, Sebastian's probably thinking, you know what? I can't talk to no one. I can't tell my dad because he'll he'll flip. And he didn't want his dad losing it and maybe losing his job. He couldn't tell the teachers no more because those guys out CPS, and then they come knocking on the door, and then he only gets in trouble again off Chris after they've gone. So her, some parents brushes it off. Oh, he's on the spectrum. He doesn't know anything, saying things. How am I applied it off? Yeah. I just saw something on YouTube. Shirts, AB, Minecraft, dark web stuff that kids can easily. Well, you see, my grandson used to use watch YouTube, my YouTube, what he called Gran Granger's YouTube, right? But we've stopped him using that now. He's only allowed YouTube kids because he was using a lot of 
naughty words, like the F bomb and things like that. So because of that, it's been stopped. But he was learning a lot from that as well. He knew how to change a tire on a car. My son doesn't. My six year old grandson does. Really? Oh, right. But no, um, he's only on YouTube Kids now. It does have a, a Minecraft game, but it's a game that they use at school as well. So he plays it at home and he can play it at school when they get time to go on the... When they get like the... If say they've done something good, they might say, well, you can go on the, la the computer today and play the Minecraft game for half an hour. You know what I mean? So... No, my, my grandson, my grandkids haven't got phones. They're only six. One's just turned turn seven and one's turning seven in October and one's turning four in January, so they're only babies. <laughs> yeah. That is true, right, SG? Well, it's making me wonder why Seth hasn't been given back the game consoles and whatever of Sebastian's. Why haven't they gave that back yet? Yeah? No, that's just a story. That be. You aren't in trouble. That's just their story. That's the narrative they are putting out there. They have to have a narrative to put out there. You're not in trouble. To make us believe Sebastian left on his own. That's their narrative. They are out there to make us believe Sebastian left that house on his own. Which is a load of BS in my opinion. Yeah, but this is six months now. Surely they would have got all the information on you by now. They want to see if... They want to see if Sebastian logs on. Possible. Yep. That is true. There's truth in the lies. Because you lie to cover something up. You lie to hide the, the truth. You know what I mean? You don't want someone to know something, so you're going to lie to them. Yeah? You're not going to tell them the truth, you're going to lie. Because you don't want that person knowing. And that's sort of like what they, what uh, the law enforcement, TBI and whatever, did with us with these lies. They showed Seth and Chris the video of the... Shut up! Go. Go and get your dinner. Go. What? No. Oh. Get my cat out of there. Get out. Right. Um, what was I saying now? So, yeah, um... It's their narrative, like, they've got to be shown to be looking not in trouble, just come home. That's their narrative. He walked out of that door. We don't know why he walked out of that door. Why not the back door? Oh, uh, because they would have heard it. Yeah, right, okay. And then it said something like, if he'd gone out the back door, he'd have been caught on camera. Am I right in here now? Why did you go out that door yet? No shoes, flashlight. Oh, they only mentioned the flashlight after 
law enforcement, I believe, spoke to them. They spoke to them on the Wednesday, I believe, after he went missing and asked them if he owned a flashlight or if he had a flashlight. And that's when they turned around and said, oh, he has this little key ring, right? Because they'd seen this video. They saw this video either on Tuesday or Wednesday morning, sometime, Tuesday, I'd say Tuesday, Tuesday afternoonish. And then they went to speak to him on the Wednesday and asked him about, did he have a flashlight? And that's when they said, oh, we had a little keychain one. You know what I mean? This disappearing thing happened on a whim. Abusers are mess, 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 Sorry. Methodical and strategies, time and location, and make sure they cover the tracks. No, we didn't. This was planned. This is what I'm saying. Was this disappearance planned? Because that footage stops on the Friday morning at 3.11. Was that when they did a trial run with the, you know what I mean, in the area? Because you heard about people saying how their footage had gone down and this hadn't been working. So did they do a trial run, which I believe they could have? Because you're not going to just go to someone's house and say, oh, you want your son kidnapped? Okay, we'll turn up, we'll go and take him. And turn up and take him, you're going to plan it, you're going to want to know where all the cameras are, everything. That's probably why, why, hold on, that's probably why they've been scouting the area, yeah? They've seen this camera here. Right? Probably realised that one hadn't got a camera. And if it had, it was facing the wrong way, maybe. They probably realised this one might have a camera because of the garages. Yeah? And this house might have a camera. So... It's no use coming round this way because this house could catch them on a camera. This house over here. This house. This house. Yeah. But if they've used an uh, electronic, whatever they call them, to affect the uh, communication things up, being it Wi Fi, right? The best way, they probably know this house has got no security camera on the side here, and they probably realise this house doesn't on the side. So, best way, down here, into the ditch, up, and along, into car, and away. Simple as. So, they did do a record, they've done a record, this has been going on, this was being talked about for maybe a week or maybe, finding out where all the cameras was, everything, this was not a spur of the moment, uh, I heard some place that Seth said his little flash was like, like, was that Seth's house? Well, I didn't hear that. I had not heard that. You know what I mean? But there's just too much going on for it not to be planned. 
And when you think, put all those times together of that video after walking over, right? Hold on, let's go back to this. You put this together, the times, because Chris was asked this on the mob crew. They said, do you know how long the video was all together? And he said, well, the first video was, what, about, was about, ooh, 10 seconds, what we saw with the lights coming round there, yeah? So I think it's a bit longer than that. I think they just speeded that video up, right? But you know why you got to get from there, down a ditch, up a ditch, and over there in 10 seconds, unless you jump. But it wasn't moving that quick. When they came from the house, those lights were moving very slowly over here, right? So that was about 10 seconds. I think, I think the longest one was about... This one here with the car was about, what, five to eight seconds, right? And then the third bit where you're seeing them going back, literally seconds. So the video itself of the whole time was about, I'd say about a minute, all in all. So they planned that down very tight, like a very tight, right? So they probably told whoever in here, right, we're coming down, we'll be down here at three o'clock, right? I'll be waiting here at three o'clock. So he's waiting there, she comes out, or they come out, they make the way across, right? They fumble about around here, getting in and out the ditch, then there's a bit of a fumbling around here, right? Then you see them disappear, right? <coughs> and then you see the light go quickly again back over there. This car was parked here by then. He's doing the jamming. He's blocking the signal on this, which didn't work, right? He's then reversed back out, gone back up here, picked him up gone. They had it down to a minute. Literally, from getting out of that car, from getting out of that car, to getting over to the house, well, to getting to here, and then for Katie or whoever to bring Sebastian over to here, and then into the car, a minute. That is very, very quick. Did you notice on CP's interview, he disconnects himself from KP and said, in the disappearance, he said, the mum, her son, now, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. But I noticed in the first two interviews he did, he kept referring to her as mum. Mum. Yes, I noticed that. And the fact that they didn't do no fingerprinting just blows my mind. Fingerprints should have been took. Right? Fingerprints should have been took from that house. From the front door. Right? Even if it's just to clear everyone, are they my Katie's fingerprints okay? Fine, she's a mother, she lives there. You know what I mean? Um, but they took no fingerprints. Chris even said that in an interview. He said, I'm not sure if it was a Smiley's or Duchess's, but he said they asked about forensics, about fingerprinting and all that lot, and they said it wouldn't be worth it, or something like that. No, what Seth said, SG, I remember Seth talking about it, he said he used to use his flashlight to lie under his bed, right, 
to read a book or to do whatever he was doing under the bed. He used to use his flashlight for that. Karen, just like the Rowles guys, adopted dad, did the same thing. Yep. It was some last. I don't recall which stream creator. I can't keep it. I know there's so many. But I remember him saying that he used to lie on the bed with his little flash torch, either reading a book or doing something under his bed. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Because this is one very, very hmm, clever woman. Because this woman can study, right? She's lying on the couch. She's studying. She's talking to CP. And she's falling asleep. Very clever. She can multitask. I say that much. So, well, Orin, Orin and Orson, they've never been found, was they? Their bodies have never been found. And yet they managed to send their, parent, their adopted parents away. But there's something going on. I don't care what you say. There's something definitely going on with some lights around there. Right? That is a car. There's lights going from that house to here, and then from here back to the house. And then you see, and actually, just as a car puts the lights on to come back to reverse, you see a light round about here. Round about there. And it's only for a quick second, if you blink, you'd miss it. But there's a light just round about here. The car's there. And it goes, the lights come on. And you see this just in the very edge before the camera is cut off. Right. And then it disappears. So it's probably come round here. And so then the car's reversed round up to here. And they've gone in the car and off. But this is definitely... <coughs> Why would Chris say when the truth comes out there'll be a lot of people eating what was it he said? I can't remember. Right. But uh and I'm thinking, well how would you know that? You know what I mean? If you know what the truth is why aren't you telling us what the truth is? Because you sit there saying, when the truth comes out, you'll all be eating, whatever. But how do you know that? Do you know the truth? That's what makes me laugh, right? What was that? What was that? Every little boy who was who had autist, who was autistic, and went missing, and his parents are in prison, right? Well, the father is. I think the father's definitely in prison, but he's never told them where the boy is. I'm going to look into this one. Funky chick. I'm going to look into that. Yeah. Just tell us. Because it makes out we're going to be eating whatever. Right? When the truth comes out. Well, what's, what's the truth then, Chris? What's the truth? You keep saying we're going to be eating whatever. So you must know what the truth is then. So what's the truth? 
If I could talk to these people, I would just say, you are cooked, you're going down, just tell us where. Give the fam parents slash family something. Yeah. But they're not. If they catch them, but they don't catch them with Sebastian, they are not going to tell us where Sebastian is. They're not. Because that's their control. That's their piece of control. Alright, and if Chris is involved, he's not going to tell us. Because that's his control. He likes control. Yep. Look at CP's arms. And I think that's why they got rid of the dogs. So that if the police did want to, say the police took, like, got the photos of his arm, because all YouTubers have had that photo of his arms, yeah? Wouldn't take much for FBI to get a copy of those photos, yeah? And it wouldn't take much, like Justin has done, how he's got a, a clip of that photo on the bite on his arm and he's put it up against Sebastian's top teeth. You can't line up with the bottom ones, but you can tell where the bottom teeth are. And now, if they had those more keys, they'd be able to take a bite impression of them and then compare it to the bite mark on that picture. Hang on. Too many. I'd love to question that dude like local style. <laughs> I'll tell you something. In the UK, there's... When... Something like this happens. People, we all say, just give me five minutes to that person in the room. Five minutes. You know what I mean? Because that's how strong people in the UK, like in the USA, are against people who hurt and harm ch children. Disgusting. It's like last year, there was... Um, an incident where there was a woman and a young girl shot, right? Both shot. Different cases, different instances. One was shot in their home, one was shot somewhere else, yeah? <coughs> People were too scared to talk to the police about the nine-year-old. They had information on who done it. They've got video footage, everything. But they're too scared to let the police have it because of repercussions. And the police just said, whoever you talk to, just reinforce the fact this is a nine-year-old little, little girl that got shot. Her life ahead of her has now been taken away. You know what I mean? They finally got, did get the guy. They finally got him. And I believe they got the one for the woman as well. But at the moment, we're going through a spate where it's knives, 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 knives. It's scary to think about England at the moment. If anyone's planning to come to the UK, do not go to England. Do not go to London. Or Manchester. Or Birmingham. Where else? Any of the big cities. Do not go to the big cities. If you're coming over to the UK, do not go to the big cities. If you want to come somewhere, come to Scotland. It's beautiful up here. Yeah, oh God. You know, I couldn't do that job. I could not do that job. I'd be burnt out after one after one case I'd be burnt out. I really would because it would just get to me.
It's horrible to think what those children are put through and everything. No. No, it's disgusting. I couldn't do it. You've got to have a strong mentality, you know what I mean, to be able to say, that's my job, this is me, you know what I mean. That's work, you know, it's me. So when you come home from work or whatever you did, you could just literally put it to one side and not worry about it. But undercover over there, you go undercover, so he wouldn't have been at home, would he? He'd have been wherever. But I couldn't do that job. <coughs> <coughs> anyway. I'm going to leave it there because I've been here nearly four hours. Oh, God. And I just thought I'd put that out there as such as, no, I couldn't do it. No, couldn't do it. Had to what? No, no, no. So, <laughs> I couldn't do it. I really couldn't, SJ. I bet he got burnt out over it, didn't he? I bet he burnt him out. Because that would break. I think I'm to watch someone do that. Right. For however long you're undercover, which can be months, if not years, sometimes, isn't it? Could be there years undercover or months. I couldn't do it. No, I'd be, no, I'd be putting a gun to the heads. Oh, I could imagine he did. Oh, I could imagine SG. I'd be putting a gun to every guy's head. Sick. But you see, thing is, this is the sick part of it. That these people who are doing this to children, right, believe it's normal. And that we're the sick ones because we don't do it. No, you're the sick ones. You've got some up there while you haven't got anything up there. You know what I mean? You've got a sod all up there in that head of yours to think. That what you are doing is the good thing, is right, there's nothing wrong in you. No. Right. Can I just say thank you to everyone on X being here. Thank you for those on YouTube being here. Please give this video a like. I would really appreciate that. Um, if you haven't already, Come and subscribe. If you're on X, please come over to YouTube and subscribe. That way you will get to see all videos and when I go live as well. Because sometimes X plays up and sometimes X won't let me live stream. Until I send a nasty email to them saying, I'm upgraded. I'm premium. Why can't I live stream? I'll cancel my premium. My pre my upgrade, you know what I mean? But they can be funny with me and they do stop me going live sometimes. So please come over, subscribe. Doesn't cost you nothing. Give me a like and if you're on X, give me a heart. Give me some love. And thank you all for being here. Thank you, SG. Thank you for that. Thank you for everyone being here and um, chatting in the chat. You shut up, my cat. <laughs> and I will be back tomorrow night. I might be putting out a video tomorrow daytime. I'm not sure yet. If I do, it'll be up and out by four o'clock. All my videos, if I put a video out in the day, it's up and done and out by 4 p.m. So then I can sit back and chill out for four hours before I come on my live. So, anyway, thank you all for being here. 
once again please give it a like please subscribe if you haven't it's good to see all some new faces in chat tonight good to see you back here sg and i'll see you all tomorrow till then good night stay safe